Tiger Stadium Brewers pitcher Cal Eldred was brilliant. He went six innings, allowing no runs, and the Brew Crew supported him with seven tallies of their own. Final score, Milwaukee 7, Detroit 2. This season for Detroit has been one of finding and evaluating good young talent while enduring the hard times that come with that process. But while the future is with the youth, the final tie to the glory days of the 80s may play his last game as a Tiger this afternoon. Live from Tiger Stadium in downtown Detroit, Pass Sports presents Major League Baseball. This afternoon, the Tigers close out the 96th season. They host John Jaha and the Milwaukee Brewers. Hi again, good lookers. Jim Price is here. My name's Ernie Harwell. We're at the corner for the final time this season, and it's the Milwaukee Brewers in the final game also of the three-game series. And this will be all the Tiger baseball for quite a while, so we hope you enjoy this final day with us. Now, Jim Price, the Tigers have been in a rebuilding mode. It's not been very pleasant, not been very happy, but we know that other franchises have gone through the same kind of problem. Yes, Ernie, you know, the, I guess the best way to put it is it's always darkest before the dawn, and hopefully the dawn is not that far away for the Tigers. Look at the Cleveland Indians in 1991, 57 and 105, then in the strike shortened year, 66 and 47. Then in 95, as everybody knows, a terrific team. They put it all together mm -hmm. as they have this year. So they had some very difficult times, and look how they've turned it around. And also, the Atlanta Braves, tough building years in 88, 89, and 90. And of course, you know what they've done since then, one of the best franchises in all of baseball. Well, it's going to be sort of a sad day here for another reason, right. uh, Jim Price, that one of the uh, great players in Tiger history is going to announce his retirement. That, of course, is uh, Alan Trammell, the captain. And we've all admired the consummate professional, a great shortstop, and I think they're really destined for the Hall of Fame. I'm with you, Ernie. He better be in the Hall of Fame because he has really done a great job for the Tigers for 20 years. Now, this year, uh, you know, forget this year, uh, 228. He did not play very much. Uh, Alan Trammell was probably more help in the locker room and on the bench than he was on the field. But look at the numbers that he has put up through the years. The captain himself, 20 seasons. Look at the number of games, over 2,000 games, a lifetime batting average, outstanding hits, home runs, RBI, six all-star appearances, a 1984 World Series MVP, and the Tiger top 10 all-time in 10 different categories. Just a, as you said, a consummate pro, uh, somebody I admire very much. Well, he does uh, so many things uh, so well, and we hope that Allen can stick around and uh, be a part of uh, Tiger baseball. I don't know what his plans are. Maybe he'll announce them in the press conference after the game, but we'd uh, like to see him a uh, part of the Tiger organization. Let's take a little break now, then we'll be right back. Baseball on Pass Sports, brought to you by Office Depot, taking care of business for companies of every size, everywhere, every day. By your Michigan Toyota dealers, where customer satisfaction is guaranteed. And by your local Michigan and Northwest Ohio cable television company. home of the Red Wings. Pass sports, home of the Pistons. Pass sports, home of the Spartans. Home of the Wolverines. Pass sports, home of the Lions. Red Wings, Pistons, Tigers, Spartans, Wolverines, and Lions coverage. Pass sports, home of the home teams. No one else comes close. Hi, everybody. I'm Fred McLeod. Over Friday, the Lions were a little bit busy with a pair of number 50. Michael Brooks leaves, signing as the free agent replacement for Chris Fieldman for the Giants. On comes another 50. Two-time All-American guard Jeff Hardings finally ended his holdout, signing a five-year deal worth more than five million bucks. It's not known how soon he'll be on the active roster, but he'll be welcome. Join us live on Past Money at 6, followed by Lions, Monday Night Magazine, 
at 7. What can I say? Here we are, the last day. Your thoughts? Well, I, you know, it's been a, somewhat of a long season, Jim. I, I think there's some, some good things that have happened. I think the worst thing we can possibly do is to focus on our record. And, you know, I know that, uh, you know, nobody wants to ha have the kind of record that we've had, but, but I, I, there's reasons for it. I, I don't think there's any question about that. And uh, I think it showed us how far we really have to go. And, you know, what we need to do is, is exactly what Smitty has done. He's brought a lot of people in, in and through here, and uh, we're going to find the right mix. I, I, I think the encouraging thing about this, and it's hard to do, is that that we've stayed on course, more or less, as far as what we want to do. I mean, we, we have some young players that aren't quite ready for the big leagues that have gotten an opportunity to play. I think you're going to see a big change in them next spring, and as the year goes on, I, you know, it's really hard to look at uh, at them now and, 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 and see how much progress they've made, but there's absolutely no question in my mind that this has been a big year for them, regardless of our record. Well, it really boils down. Uh, you try to build a team on pitching, pitching, and pitching. Really, we have a long way to go there. Well, we really do. And, uh, you know, one of the, fortunately, one of the strong points of our organization right now is we do have some pitchers that are going to push the ones we got here. And without competition, you, you see, you very seldom ever see a, a young player max out as soon as he should because you have nobody pushing him to get better. And, I mean, we can... We can do some things. We can put them in the right direction or shove them in the right direction and give them little tidbits of advice. But unless they feel the uh, the urgency to get better, then it's going to take them a little bit longer than than the normal. But I, you know, Jim, I think we still have some pieces to the puzzle. I, I don't think that it's it's a situation where we have to go out and just just dismantle because we basically did that in spring training right. and we That's came right. up with some players. You know, we came up with Clark and. Uh, Lewis and Higgy's had a great year, and Osmus has done a great job uh, considering the uh, circumstances, a pretty good job behind the plate. So I mean, we, we've, we have found some people. It's just a, a matter of getting the, the proper mix, with, uh, which makes for uh, a better chemistry, which is very important. Tell me a little bit about Buddy Bell. Uh, my goodness, uh, I lived and died with you all year, but tell me uh, how Buddy Bell feels now as a manager, as a person. Well, you know, it's hard to say right now, Jim. I, I think I'll probably be able to put this thing in perspective a little bit more because, you know, I, I know I said earlier that you, you, we really can't focus on the record, but it's it's really tough not to. So um, that's probably on my mind more than anything else at this particular time because I think we could. I, I was expecting to be able to make more of a difference, and I think. Uh, I, I don't think there's any reason why I shouldn't think that. Um, as far as my situation here, I, I was never obsessed with being a manager before I got here. Now I'm extremely obsessed with it, and that's I don't great. know if that's, that's good or that's bad. Good, and I'm uh, I'm very content here. I love Detroit. It's a great city. I mean, I've met a lot of nice people here. The people have been very fair with us, and I just hope they they. They just <laughs> be patient with us a little bit longer because it's going to take some time, and uh, you know we're going to go through some hard times. But I feel much better as a manager now than I would than I than I felt coming into this season. I feel not. I, I feel like I still need a long way to go, and I'm still learning something every day. But but I feel I really enjoy what I'm doing. Gipper, thank you. Our last interview of this season. 20 more years to go, you and I. Well, I hope so, Jim. Right, It'd be buddy. nice. And I'm really looking forward to that. Well, the pitchers, the starting pitchers this afternoon, two youngsters, Jeff D'Amico, six and six on the year for the Brewers, and Justin Thompson, one and six on the season for the Detroit Tigers. Two of the outstanding young pitchers in the American League. There's Jeff D'Amico. He's a big one. He's six foot seven, 250 pounds, and Ron Oster talks about the youngster. Hey, he's got a good arm, a uh, good fastball. He throws a four-seamer and a two-seamer. Good fastball, good hard uh, overhand curveball, which is uh, fastball and his curveball probably his out pitches. And then he throws a change also, but uh, he's tough. Uh, we had a little bit of success off of him last time. I think we had a few home runs off of him. Yes. Hopefully we can get a few runs off of him today and hold them uh, uh, the scoring less than we get. But, uh, you know, he's, he's a good young pitcher. 
And here's another good young pitcher, even though you don't see him there. He has finished his warm up tosses. It'll be Justin Thompson going for the Tigers. Uh, again, a major part of what the Tigers are trying to do, and maybe the key uh, young pitcher that the Tigers will look for to the future here at Tiger Stadium. Now, he is looking to snap a four game losing streak. We'll take a break and tell you more about this game this afternoon after this timeout. Discover the defensive training secrets of America's finest baseball school in an exciting videotape. Baseball World's Defensive Drills video features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky and the same revolutionary new training techniques that have produced Baseball World's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU National Championship teams. The Defensive Drills video vastly improves players' arm strength, running speed, quickness, agility, and infield and outfield defensive skills. Even coaches practice organization. Lou Pavlovich, Jr., editor of Collegiate Baseball Magazine, calls it a masterpiece, the best defensive drill video ever produced. Many professional players are excited about this videotape. Just ask Atlanta Braves superstar Fred McGriff. This is the instructional video that gets results. Baseball World's Defensive Drills video makes a great gift and benefits players of all ages and ability levels. To order your copy for only $29.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 1-800-253-8005. That's 1-800-253-8005. It really worked for me. I'm here for the last ball game of the season and uh, last ball game of that young man, Alan Trammell, who has decided to hang it up after 20 terrific seasons with the Tigers. And I just wondered, as he was going through his loosening up exercises, what his thoughts were today. Only six shortstops in Major League history with at least six seasons and a bit at the 300 batting average. Appling, Sewell, Cronin, Wagner, Vaughn, and Alan Trammell. He's in very good company, is he not? Alan, one of the only the two Tiger, I should say three Tiger batters that took batting practice today. Buddy Bell threw to Tram, Melvin Nieves, and Kamira Barti, and Tram was hitting the ball good in BP, and I was kidding. I said, Tram, save a couple of those for the, go, uh, for the ball game. Go out in style. I know a lot of the players uh, kind of hate to see this season come to an end. They hate to see it be Alan Trammell's last ball game. But uh, sometimes things come to an end. Good things have to come to an end. And uh, Alan Trammell has certainly been a terrific ball player for the Tiger organization over 20 years. You're looking at the umpires who are making their way to home plate to get ready for the game this afternoon. Mark Johnson will be behind home plate. Larry Young at first base. Ted Barrett at second base. Fielding Galbraith will be at third base. And you hear the applause from the crowd as Alan Trammell will take out the batting lineup for the Tigers. A nice gesture by Buddy Bell. Talking to Jim Gantner, the first base coach with the Milwaukee Brewers. So Alan Trammell starting this day in style. And you know I was saying Ernie wonder what thoughts went through Allen's mind as he traveled down to the ballpark today for the last time as a player. Uh, he took a little batting practice. Uh, he was loosening up. I just uh, curious. I know I talked to Al Kaline what his thoughts were the last day and it'll be interesting to talk to Allen uh, as days go on when he can look back on this day and reminisce a little bit. I talked to him a little bit before the game and uh, it was a bit of sweet time for him and is and he said he uh, felt like he uh, wanted to uh, really have some closure on this to to make it definite and uh, he's going to tell the, the media after the game they'll have a conference of uh, 15 minutes after the conclusion of the game and he says I just uh, want to get it over it's been a great career and I've had fun but the time has come time has come it's exactly right I talked to him before the game also you know what he said to me he says when are we going to tee it up <laughs> <laughs> well that's nice I'd like to get in his pockets he's mm. got some deep pockets and mine are kind of short so oh no I wouldn't say that <laughs> I'd like to get some of that big time money so I'm looking forward to it well we've had a lot of goodies delivered up here oh. we want to thank all the folks who have uh, supplied uh, the gourmet food for the crew and Everybody else. Some of them remain, remain anonymous. Some of them uh, we know, but we just want to thank everybody because uh, there's a warmth around here that uh, you can't duplicate. You anywhere. cannot. Young lady by the name of Bath Beth. S C B A T Z L I N E. Shut line. Shut line from Taylor. Yep. Every year she sends up goodies to Ernie and I. Beth, we thank you very much and. Uh, 
just so many nice folks have been wonderful to Ernie and I uh, this year uh, as they have in the previous years. Let's take a look at the Brewer lineup for the last game of the 1966 season. It'll be Gerald Williams leading off in the second spot. Mark Loretta. Jeff Cirillo will play second base today in bat third. He had a big night last night. Matt Miskey, the Michigander, will be in the cleanup spot. Turner Ward will be the DH. Tim Unroe will follow him. Batting seventh, Brian Banks at first base. Kelly Stinnett during the catching and batting eighth. And Todd Dunn will bat ninth and play right field for the Brewers. For the Tigers, defensively, one last time, Higginson, Barty, and Nieves. In the infield, Travis Fryman, Alan Trammell, for the last time as a Detroit Tiger baseball player at shortstop, Todd Cruz at second, Clark at first, Casanova during the catching, and Justin Thompson during the pitching today for the Tigers. Justin, uh, one and six on the year, 467 ERA. He's pitched 34 innings, given up 54 hits, 28 runs. He's walked 27, and he has struck out 43. He's looking to snap that four game losing streak, covering six starts, but his 467 ERA is lowest among all the uh, Tiger pitchers who have started a game in 1996. As we've said many times, this is the young man the Tigers hope to build their starting pitching staff around, and he is looking to go out in style. He has not been happy the way he has pitched recently, and hopefully today, you know, I mentioned it last night, Ernie, that uh, you always like to get that last at bat, get a base hit. You like to pick up that last win, and uh, Justin told me before the game, uh, he hopes to really go out in style and show the Tigers and the fans uh, what he can do in the future for them. Well, he'll be facing a fine young player in Gerald Williams, leading off batting 248 with uh, five home runs. And here's the first pitch of the final game, and it's a strike. <laughs> Wayne Lindsay, former New York Yankee, uh, came to Milwaukee the last of August. It's a ball outside. Bright sunny day here at the corner. We're mighty happy you're tuned our way. Little chopper fouled at the plate. Justin, good size, six foot four. Fastball, a breaking ball, and a changeup. He will cut that fastball at times. Two two, the count on the leadoff hitter, Gerald Williams. Bright sunny skies, high sky today. There's a two hop of the second cruise fires over to Clark and there's one up and one down. I was just thinking I wonder how Travis feels after all those games at shortstop back mm -hmm. at the hot corner Ernie I bet he's saying wow this is a lot closer than it is at shortstop. <laughs> Well, I think uh, it's good that Tram can play the final game of his uh, Tiger career at shortstop. Oh, absolutely. The position that, uh, oh, I didn't say it for that. I just meant so well. Yeah, I just meant the contrast. Oh, yeah, I understand that. There's a ground ball to uh, Travis, and he scoops it neatly, and they throw the first. He got him. Two up and two down on a couple of grounders. Travis with those quick hands. Uh, I said it last night. I've said it so many times. I don't know of anybody better playing the game of baseball right now than Travis Fryman at third base. He makes the hard plays look easy. Now we'll see a Jeff Cirillo come to bat. A 327 hitter. A big night last night. Uh, he is uh, really a good looking young ball player. He played some second base last year too but he is a third baseman. Uh, they juggled their lineup a little bit. Uh, uh, Phil Gardner wants Jaha to have that 300 batting average. Uh, actually, the first Brewer to hit 300 and over 100 RBIs and over 30 home runs since Cooper did it in 1983. So he's out of the lineup. Protect that 300 batting average. Good move, I think, by Phil Gardner. Here's the pitch on the way. Here's a ball outside. Cirillo in his second year with the Brewers. He was up a little bit in 94, but last year was his first full season. And he takes the ball, 2-0. Two, oh. two out, nobody on. Justin got the first two. Starting off in good style. 
Now pitching to Jeff Cirillo. And uh, there's a strike. Uh, the plate umpire, Larry Young, said so. Two on the count. He fouls it away. Talking about that 300 average, I remember when I was at Baltimore, Dave Philly had it. And I remember when you were at Baltimore. Had a, three, <laughs> had a 300 average, but in those days, the averages were unofficial, so they, they kept him out of the final game, and then the official averages came out, and they figured he batted 299. Oh, how rude. He was a switch hitter, wasn't he? Yep. Mm -hmm. Pretty good uh, veteran ball player at that time. 2-2 two -two pitch. Got him, and Justin has a good inning. One, two, three, go the Brewers, and the Tigers bat in the first inning at scoreless. Well, that's how you want to get started. That was a good straight change by Justin Thompson and the hot hitting Jeff Cirillo out in front of it. All right, for the Tigers this afternoon, here's how they'll line up. Leading off, and the designated hitter will be Curtis Pride, and then Alan Trammell for the last time will be batting second. Travis in the third spot. Higgy will be the cleanup man. Tony Clark will follow him. And then Melvin Nieves will bat six. Raul Casanova will bat seventh and do the catching. Todd Cruz in the eighth spot. And batting ninth will be Kamira Barti. And here is Jeff D'Amico doing the pitching for the Milwaukee Brewers. As I said, he's a big one, 6'7", 250, 6'6", six six on the year, 540 ERA. He's thrown 80 innings. Given up 30 walks and he struck out 52. He has a fastball, a breaking ball, and a changeup. And his last outing, he picked up the win against the Tigers last weekend in Milwaukee. Six innings, eight hits, save up six earned runs, and he gave up a parcel of home runs in that contest. So he will give you some pitches to hit. Talking to some of the guys before the game, they say he has a terrific future ahead of him. But at this stage, the youngest player in the American League at 20 years nine months and two days he will make some mistakes he will hang the breaking ball and every time at bat he will give you something to hit but you need to take advantage of it defensively for Milwaukee in the outfield it'll be Miski Williams and Todd Dunn in right in the infield it'll be Unro Loretta Sorella and Banks behind the plate Kelly Sinet doing the pitching Jeff D'Amico. Curtis Pride will lead it off for the uh, Tigers. Curtis batting at uh, 299. Speaking of the 300 mark, yes. he has 10 home runs and he's uh, knocked in at 31. He's led off in each of the last 11 starts and he's homeward to, to lead off a game twice. And D'Amico feeds him an inside pitch ball one. Well, Ernie. Ricky Henderson is the all time leader as a home run leadoff man with 70 in his career. Curtis has that good power the opposite way. Good home run, home run power. There's a bump that will uh, go foul and the back of the on deck circle and Alan Trammell makes the catch. Ernie as you know working with me all these years uh, during the game I will make uh, talk about different pointers to the kids out there and to the coaches. Now during this game what I hope to do is talk about some things that you can do in the offseason. Now even if you play football and basketball, soccer, whatever, and you want to be a baseball player, I try to point out some things you can do to improve. There's a curve in for a strike on Pride 1 and 2. All right, we'll be listening to you. Okay. <laughs> No score first inning. Fastball hit on the ground towards second. Cirillo over to Banks and there's one up and one down and let's stand by now and see what kind of a greeting Alan Trammell gets. It's got to make him feel good. 228 hitter with one home run. And he takes a strike from the youngest in the American League. 
Scholar may grow a little bit more, Jim. <laughs> you better believe Only it. He's 20 uh, years old. That's right. He'll get much stronger. There's a high foul off of first base. It'll uh, probably reach the seats. Yep, it will. Oh, we're back at first. Come on, Tram. Hit the ball like you did in batting practice. Go out in style, baby. The uh, youngest uh, brewer ever is Robin Yount. He broke in at the age of 18 and a half. And you know where he's headed. Yes, sir. Hall of Fame. Strike two pitch to Trammell. One ball, two strikes on the 20 year veteran. 20 years old pitching to a 20 year veteran. How about what that? What about that? 2020. Ground ball hit toward the left side. Fired over to first. On row to Banks. And there are two up and two down. So we've not seen a runner yet on either side. And here comes Fryman. Good to see Travis get that batting average up to 270. And I hope he keeps it there. There's something about that anything below 270. The numbers don't look as good. Ball on the count on him. But nonetheless, no matter what he finishes up today, a terrific year, a Travis Ryman type year. One and one from uh, D'Amico. D'Amico's a native of uh, St. Pete. He lives in Pinellas Park, Florida. That's the fastball a tapped foul the back of the plate no score in the opening inning neither team put a man on yet. Yes you were talking about uh, we were talking about how young this young man is and uh, as he gets stronger you would think he'd definitely have more zip on his fastball especially with that size. It's a lot of leverage. One two pitch. And the count even two two. Now this is the 96th season in the American League for the Tigers. 2-2 pitch to Travis. Fouled away. Travis still waiting to hear if uh, they're going to count on him at shortstop next year. Buddy Bell said he'd let him know very shortly. And talking about the offseason, uh, most of these players uh, will start working out in a couple weeks or two to work uh, not only physically, but uh, also in other areas they want to improve on. And those are the types of things I'll be talking about during the game. There's a breaking ball on the count full. And Travis will, will be the fellow if they say Ernie they want him to play shortstop his workout regiment will be different uh, for a shortstop. Two down nobody on no score in the first three two pitch to Travis Fryman. Hit the right field a slicing drive may go foul it is a foul ball down in the corner. Not by much it was slicing all the way the wind is blowing out in that direction it's blowing from the west out toward right. Still a 3 2 count on the Freeman. Popped up near the plate. Stanett, the uh, catcher, makes a catch in fair territory, and the Tigers go 1 2 3. No score at the end of one. Gems one more time and I have to tell you it has not been easy sometimes this year but this is what it's all about pitching pitching and pitching and if you saw the interview with Buddy Bell Buddy mentioned that's how you have to build the team around pitching and that's certainly where the Tigers are looking he did say one thing about uh, at, at long last there are appear to be some arms in the minor league system so you will probably see some new names in spring training next year the 40 man roster uh, uh, will probably be some changes there but I think the changes will be a lot in the pitching category and this is the young man that they hope to head it up with. And uh, as we did last night with Terry Francona our last interview with him and 
The same thing today with bench coach Ron Oster. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, it's been a long year. Uh, you know, we've had our ups and downs. Uh, it's been a tough year. It's been a hard year, but uh, we can learn from it. I think everybody's learned from this year, and uh, you look for positives in years like this. And, and and I think there are a lot of positives, and and you just learn from from this experience. I think a lot of the, the players have learned, and uh, I think we'll be a better team next year. Well so, uh, said, Coach Oster. Well, here's the Michigander coming to bat, Matt Miski. Batting at a 276 clip. He's a native of uh, Midland, Michigan, makes his home now in Arizona. He had uh, one for four uh, with a double who drove in a couple of runs last night. No score when the second inning, the Brewers batting against uh, Justin Thompson. Ball one to Matt Miski. Bay City Western High School. Product who uh, broke in in uh, 1990 with Spokane in the San Diego system. There's a fly ball into short right field. Cruz going back and it drops in the front of Nieves and behind Cruz for the game's first hit. Miski is on with a Texas League single. You will notice uh, Melvin Nieves, the traction out there is still not uh, real good with all the rain that we've had. Tiger Stadium has great drainage, but uh, it's been deluged here with rain the last three or four days, and the footing kind of treacherous still out in the outfield. Here's the switch batting uh, turn award, the 31-year-old veteran, batting 197 with a couple of home runs. Infield and double play depth on him, and he takes one inside from uh, Justin Ball one. Turner Ward did not see a lot of action this year, Ernie, and uh, I tell you, I think a lot of people think he has, uh, he's a pretty good ball player, so uh, I wouldn't be surprised you wouldn't see his, him moving along to another ball club next year. Well, he's uh, tried a few in his uh, career so far. There's a bounding ball to Trammell, the underhands to Cruz, one relay to first, it is a double play, two for the price of one started by Alan Trammell. Well, he's made a few in his uh, Tiger career, and there's one more. <laughs> and none easier than that one, a jam job. One hop right to him, chest high, a little flip to Cruz, and uh, two for the price of one. And the batter will be Unroe. Tim Unroe batting uh, 167. Batted 270 at uh, their Triple A club this year in New Orleans. Got in the game last night. He's played third base. He's played first base. He started out as a third baseman. And he takes a strike. Monroe looking and the curve hits the target. Two strikes. No score yet. We've got two down for Milwaukee in their second inning. Fouled away. That one will uh, reach the seats. This is where Justin, I think, uh, will have to improve a little bit. If you remember last year, his little stint with the Tigers, he pitched tight to the right-handed hitters. This year, he has not come inside as much with authority like he did right there. That's a key for him. Unruh waiting, and it's a ground ball foul just outside of first base. Tigers uh, trying to uh, stop that uh, home loss streak that has reached record proportions for them. 16. High hard one. One ball, two strikes. Two to the count. There's a base hit in the left center. Well, the second hit for the Brewers. Each has come in this inning, and each has been a single. That'll bring to bat Brian Banks. Young man had a pretty good year at Triple A, their New Orleans club. He's a switch hitter. 
Came out of Brigham Young University. He uh, hails from uh, Mesa, Arizona. And uh, takes the ball low. No score, two out, one arm by the Brewers. High fastball on the banks. Three and oh, the count. Really about the first time Justin's been behind on the hitter, Jim. Yeah, that has been uh, so important for him to get ahead in the hitters, as it true really is with it with every pitcher. That's uh, Stanette, the uh, catcher waiting on deck. There's a strike call. Mr. Young said so. He walked him. That'll put two men on with two men out. If we can show that pitch again, I, I want to show you that you, something you young catchers really should work on. I, I felt Raul Casanova may have taken that strike away from Justin Thompson. If he'd have caught that ball with the palm up and showed it the umpire a little better. Now watch how he catches the ball knee high. Watch his glove. See, he caught it like that. If he'd have caught it with the palm up, that might have showed the umpire that it was a little bit better pitch. So you youngsters, that's something you can work on. In the offseason, also little drills in your basement or in your garage. You can have your have your dad or your coach go about ten feet away and throw balls to you in the in the kneeling position and work on a quick glove hand. Kelly Stanett with a counter ball one on him. There's a little uh, chop uh, hit toward uh, Tony Clark. He'll make the play unassisted and that retires the Brewers at the end of one and a half. The game scoreless. It's their turf. It's their world. It's their game. And when we don't play by their rules, the results can be deadly. From the creator of the award-winning television series Wild America comes a home video unlike anything you've ever seen. These are nature's dangerous encounters, captured in one of the most astonishing wildlife films ever made, and available now for the first time as a special one-hour home video. Call this toll-free number now to get Dangerous Encounters for just $19.95. It is not available in stores. Order now, and you'll also receive Watching Wildlife absolutely free. That's right. Both of these extraordinary programs are yours for just $19.95. Call now. For rush delivery, get your credit card ready and call 1-800-253-8005. That's 1-800-253-8005. Or send your check or money order to the address on your screen. Call now. This is not my hobby. This is not my little thing. It might have been the glass ceiling. This is not what I do till the kids get home. This is not my... This is not what I do to make ends meet. Might have been the old boy network. This is not my husband's idea. It's not my father's But the real reason why 7.9 million women in this country have opened their own businesses is... This is my business. Because they can. This is my business. Office Depot. We've got all you need. All at the best prices. Guaranteed. Office Depot. This is where I take care of business. Welcome back, everybody. Tiger Baseball and Past Sports is brought to you by the employees of Avis. We're into the future, into it now, and we're trying harder than ever. That's Avis. Two hits for the Tigers. I mean, two hits for the Brewers. The Tigers need to get on track, and here's the man, Ernie, that can do it. Yes, sir. Bobby Higginson's had a great year hitting 321. He's hit safely in the last seven games, finishing off in fine style. Jeff D'Amico on the mound, Bobby Higginson batting. And the curve is over, but it's low on Bobby Ball one. Tigers one out, one, two, three in their first inning. Foul hit the deep in the bullpen. One and one on Higginson. 
D'Amico with a six and six record. Earned run mark 5.40. One one pitch. He got the corner. Two strikes on him. You remember that Bobby Higginson added a good 10 12 pounds of muscle for this year and he said he's going to try to do the same thing not add much more but actually make himself a little bit stronger. There's a drive to left it will drop in for a base hit. Fielded by Miski off his chest and that's the first tiger hit. Man on nobody down for Tony Clark. Well Bobby Higginson again pitch down low and away from him he goes with the pitch and that has been a big change for Bobby this year learning to go the opposite way take what the pitcher will give him and I mentioned Bobby's going to be working uh, to improve his hand strength and his forearm arm strength this season Tony Clark a 247 and a 25 home runs for this young man 69 RBIs he jams him at the shoulder Ernie this young man hit another mammoth home run Friday night on the roof through the rain. Hmm. Just below the light tower in right center field on the roof. There's a breaking ball that grabs the outside corner to even things on Tony at one and one. Ernie, that's where it hit hmm. through a driving rainstorm, also, where the ball, usually the ball doesn't carry very well under those conditions. No score. We're in the second inning. The tags of the man on, nobody down. Lawing away with a fastball, two and one on Tony Clark. Well, Tony hit a home run off of uh, D'Amico the uh, last week in Milwaukee. Maybe get another pitch he can do something with in this ball game. Fouled away, two two on Tony Clark. In fact, not only Tony Clark, but Bobby Higginson, Melvin Nieves, and Phil Nevin all homered in that ball game. Nevin uh, hit two of them in that game. It's the man at first is Higginson, the only uh, Tiger runner so far. And Clark waits on a 2-2 pitch. It's the curve to left field. It's deep. Miski going back. It's long gone. A two-run homer. The Tigers lead it two to nothing. Well, that's another Fago home run. Beverly Davis of Detroit wins a free case, and her favorite charity gets five free cases from Fago. How about that, Tony Clark? With two strikes on him, he hits home run number 26. Shows you once again the tremendous power he has to all fields. His ball just carries and carries and carries, and that was out of here by a good margin above, looked like above uh, between the Budweiser sign and 365 mark, lower deck. Well, then the Avis looks at a strike call. Remember, two strikes on him now. Breaking ball on the outside part of the plate. Again, you youngsters, doesn't try to pull the ball, goes with the pitch. One and one on the Avis. Now watch this ball where it lands. Left center field, lower deck, and back there above. Was that above the exit? Wow. Good job. Two and one, the count on the Avis. Melvin hit his 24th home run last night to left field. There's a high fly ball down the line in left. And finally, Loretta, the shortstop, takes care of it. Looked like Unro would take it, and then the, the wind took it away from him to the shortstop. Yeah, Unro had no chance. I was watching him with the wind blowing. Same thing happened last night with a, a fly ball out there. They didn't gauge the wind properly, and this is so important. Now look at the third baseman. He's not within 10 feet of the ball. Thank goodness his shortstop was there, and he has to reach back for it. But kids, you always check the elements. Know how the wind is blowing. Know about the sun. What position's in before you take your position. Here's the catcher Casanova looking at the curve for a strike. Raul, a 185 hitter. Two strikes on him. That home run by uh, Tony went over 400 feet.
One Cas ball, two strikes. Ernie Casanova, like so many of the Tigers, will be playing winter ball. He'll be playing down home in Puerto Rico. Pop up over on the right side of the infield. Backing up is Cirillo to put it away. Two down. But that'll be a good, good workout for him playing winter ball in Puerto Rico with all the good players that come from down there. Get to play a lot of ball games and who knows where he will be next year. Well, here's a Paso Cruz a batting a 235. Young man from the Dominican Republic takes and it's a ball low. He's been up four different times now with the Tigers. Fouled away. One and one the count. You know at this stage of the game Ernie I think Fausto is in a pretty good position with Trammell retiring. Uh, if the Tigers go out and get another shortstop or another middle infielder time will tell but uh, I think you'll know pretty shortly uh, what's going to happen in the infield situation mainly because they have to let Travis know. Two on the count on him with uh, two down and nobody on two nothing Tigers. It's a fly ball down the line and right and it will be caught fairly easily by Mr. Dunn and the side retired. But the Tigers get a couple and they lead 2 0 at the end of two. Gas up at Jackson, get the Blue Coral Works Plus package free. Ten punches on your frequent fueler card entitles you to a free Works Plus package with the purchase of a car wash. Believe me, folks, this is no walk in the park. This is no Sunday drive. This. PGA Tour. Watch the hottest new golf show. This is the PGA Tour on Fast Sports. That's me. Two years ago as a YFU exchange student, living with the Katachi family, learning Japanese, and understanding another culture firsthand. <laughs> it's clear that my YFU experience is a real advantage because the benefits of exchange go well beyond your YFU summer, semester, or year abroad. In college admissions, we're looking for students who are mature, well-rounded, and who have a strong sense of where they're going. YFU can do that for you. I saw that there were a bunch of universities that were offering scholarships to people who had been on YFU exchanges, and it helped me to get a full scholarship to one of the universities on that list. When first I was thinking I want to be successful in the U.S., now I think in terms of the world. It just opened my eyes to everything, and I just realized that there's so much out there, and there's so much else I want to do. Call Youth for Understanding International Exchange at 1-800-ARE-YOU-READY. Get a free brochure on exchange programs for high school students in over 30 countries around the world. Tiger Baseball on Pass Sports is brought to you by Ford. Think Ford first. Right now, you can get as low as 2.9% financing or cash back up to $2,000 on selected vehicles that we look at a base hit off the bat of Dunn. And you can get those at your 31 Metro Detroit four dealers. That's Dunn on first for the single Todd Dunn, the uh, young man from uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, who just made his debut this month for the Brewers. He uh, leads it off with a single. That's their third hit off Justin Thompson. They've all three been singles. Well, the Tigers have a two run homer from Tony Clark and they lead two nothing here in the third. Here's Gerald Williams, a fine set of fielder for the Brewers at the plate. With a man on and nobody down. And the big curve bends across and grabs the inside corner. Strong wind blowing toward right. That's out of the west here at the corner. Infield in double play depth. And the curve gets over for strike two. Boy, two good curveballs from Justin. When he has that curveball working, that fastball looks that much quicker and when you can hit the location that he just did there, it even looks better. That's done at first. Fast ball fouled off, and the count stays at strike two. Well, the Tigers will make a very neat gesture after the game. Fans uh, with the winning tickets that they've drawn will be awarded the 
uniform shirts by the various Tiger players and coaching and managerial personnel. There's a check swing and the count is uh, one and two. Yeah, a lot of organizations do that, Ernie, and uh, I'm glad to see the Tigers do that. That is really nice, uh, a nice idea. There's a ground ball that Thompson feels it, bobbles it, throws the first in time. Williams is out and Dunn takes second. Now the Brewers have a man at second here in the third with the one down. Tigers lead them 2 nothing. Mark Loretta, the shortstop, steps up. Northwestern product, Loretta. MVP in the Big Ten. In a 93, he takes a strike. Home run by Tony Clark, the difference of the game. It came in the second inning for the Tigers. They lead 2 nothing. One and one. Two balls at a strike now on Loretta. Justin trying to hold him off. Gives him a curve in for a strike, 2-2. Two -two. Little chopper hit toward Trammell. He grabs it but can't do anything with it. It'll be an infield hit for Loretta. Trammell did the right thing holding on to the ball. Took a look toward third to see what was happening over there, but Dunn had made it easily and didn't make a big turn. Second inning, the Brewers have had a couple of singles. Well, the minute this ball was hit, Trammell knew he wouldn't have a play at first base. He anticipated that maybe the runner going into third would round the bag and he'd have a play there. But here it is. Just gets a piece of it. A high chopper and with the infield so wet, the, the ball just dies and just no chance. You see, Trammell didn't even look at first base. It'll be uh, Jeff Cirillo now with the runners at the corners. The Brewers are trying to brew up something here at Tiger Stadium. They trail 2 nothing. One of the reasons Jeff Cirillo playing, uh, Phil Gardner hoping he can get a couple hits and finish in the top 10 in batting average in the American League. He's had a terrific year, now batting 326. 45 doubles is impressive. Ball one on uh, Cirillo. One of the Milwaukee Brewers that's uh, hitting high above what he hit lifetime in the major leagues, even though he's just a youngster, he has really improved his statistics this season. Ernie, the shadows are in there pretty quickly, aren't they? Yeah, they are. It's uh, that time of year cutting across the plate now and will gradually move out toward the mound. He chops a foul out of play. This is sort of our own sundial that we've got here. We tell time by That's where right. the shadows are. Jeff Cirillo, last night, four for five. Look at that. Twos, two doubles, two singles, and he drove in two. That's the railroad performance. Toot, 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 toot. <laughs> Cut Ernie off. Cut him off. <laughs> Here's a high foul down the right field side. Everybody going for it. Here comes Davis. He makes a catch. 
And the runner at third is staying. I'm surprised he at least didn't bluff down the line or maybe even come on because uh, Nieves was uh, running away from his uh, throwing side when he caught that ball in foul territory. You're surprised. I'm flabbergasted. That's a play that he had possibly had a chance to tag up. Now the ball comes back to Melvin and he really makes a fine running catch but the runner done at third has got to be tagging up because he caught the ball and he would have had a very difficult time stopping and setting up and throwing to home plate. So a base running mistake by Dunn at third base. And that hurts Jeff Cirillo because that could have been an RBI and no time at bat for him. Now there are runners at the corners with uh, two out. Matt Miski at the plate takes a curve. Matt had a single in the second. He became the first runner for either side with that single. Two runs, two hits for the Tigers. No runs, four hits for the Brewers. We're in the third. Big curve stays away. Two and zero. Oh. Jim, just looking at those shouters, it occurs to me that most of the major league players would rather play at night. <laughs> and maybe one of the reasons is you have a lot more uniform lighting and uh, can probably, in general, follow the ball a little bit. Better. Well, you're absolutely right. And the shadows are uh, definitely an asset to a pitcher because the ball comes out of the sun and goes into the shade or vice versa. It makes it tough to pick up. I always like playing at nighttime a lot better. 2 1 pitch. He backed him off. Three and one on Matt Bisky. That's the man at third done, and the man at first is Loretta. Bisky waiting and takes a walk that will load him with Brewers and bring up the veteran Turner Ward. It's the second walk issued by Justin Thompson. Boy, that, I thought that was a terrific interview with Buddy Bell before the ball game. Buddy has seen it all this year, and uh, I really like what he said when he said that, uh, you know, he wanted to be a manager, but he it, it wasn't something that he really had to do, and now he feels he really wants to do it and do it for a long time. Well, Mr. Thompson's in a jam now. The bases are loaded for the Brewers and two down. Turner Ward hit into a double play the first time these two met today. Ward batting uh, 194. And fouls it away. Turner Ward started out with the Yankees. That was a good while ago. He started in 1986 at their farm system. Then he went to Cleveland. From Cleveland to Toronto. Milwaukee picked him up on waivers from the Blue Jays about three years ago. There's a strike in above the knees. Two quick ones on the Turner Ward. That's the way to get ahead of the hitter. Now he's got some uh, time. He can work the hitter a little bit if he so chooses. Bases are loaded. Two nothing Tigers. Milwaukee threatening in the third. Two out. And it's a high hard one. One ball two strikes.
Fly ball, hit the right. Here comes Nieves. He will make the catch, and the Milwaukee leave three. At the end of two and a half, Tigers ahead 2 nothing. The power of nature. It can turn your summer day into a nightmare of destruction when a deadly tornado strikes. Now, National Geographic video takes you into the eye of the storm. In Nature's Fury, an incredible 60-minute You Are There video that captures nature at its deadliest. Call this toll-free number now to order Nature's Fury for only $19.95. Order now, and you'll also receive the best of cameramen who dare absolutely free. This special television offer is not available in stores, and you have no risk as your satisfaction is guaranteed for your money back. So call now to get Nature's Fury for only $19.95 and receive your bonus video free. Call now. For rush delivery, get your credit card ready and call 1-800-253-8005. That's 1-800-253-8005. Or send your check or money order to the address on your screen. Call right now. Life could be a lot different. Come to Gaylord, Michigan, where life is simple. Eat, sleep, and play golf. Call us for your free Gaylord Golf Vacation Planner. 21 incredible golf courses, one beautiful location. Yes, sir, Red Wing Hockey is back on Passports. The Wings take on the Tampa Bay Lightning coming up tonight live at 7 o'clock with my old buddy Mickey Redmond and Passports new play-by-play -play announcer Mike Goldberg. The most Red Wing games are on Passports, home of the Red Wings, home of the home teams. Here's uh, Barty at the bat, and uh, he bunts toward first base. And he'll have himself a base hit. The pitcher, D'Amico, could not handle it. He slipped a little bit. I don't think he had a chance anyway under any condition. Well, if you are golfers out there, this is the way you'd like to hit your soft wedges or your sand wedge. Watch the backspin on this ball. He really deadens it. We can see the ball hit here. This will be a good shot of it right here. Now watch the ball hit. Hey, and comes back just a little bit. Boy, a good bun, and he would have had no chance to get him anyway. Yes, sir, I like to hit my wedges like that. Curtis Pride, the leadoff man, coming up now for the second time. He started the first inning by bouncing to Cirillo at second base. 2 0 Tigers on a Tony Clark home run with Higginson on first base in the second inning. He's had it gone the last six ball games. Be good to see him get a couple hits, get that average up to 300 today. Pride uh, bunts toward third. Unrow, the third baseman, uh, fires over to first. So it'll be a sacrifice moving Barty into second. Alan Trammell coming to bat for the second time. The first time up here in his final game, he bounced to third. And this is the second time he's received a standing ovation from the Tiger faithful. And rightly so. Big curve, uh, strike one called on Tram. Now, D'Amico would just work with this game plan a little bit and not make such good pitches on Tram. That was an outstanding curveball low and away. Ground ball knocked down by Unro, and that will be a base hit for Yeah, Tramble. they'll give him a base hit on that one. And the Tigers have two men on and one away. Well, the ball hit to the left of the third baseman. It's a, a low pitch, 
and Tram hits it hard and he just handcuffs him a little bit unable to make the play they're going to give him a base hit the in between hop Fryman made the final out of the first inning by uh, popping up to the catcher Stanett. He hits a little looper, grabbed in the air, throw to second. It is a double play. Cirillo to Loretta as a double off Marti, the man at second base, to retire the side. At the end of three, Tigers lead them 2 0. Hi, everybody. I'm Fred McLeod. Over Friday, the Lions are a little bit busy with a pair of number 50. Michael Brooks leaves, signing as the free agent replacement for Chris Spielman for the Giants. On comes another 50. Two-time All-American guard Jeff Hardings finally ended his holdout, signing a five-year deal worth more than five million bucks. It's not known how soon he'll be on the active roster, but he'll be welcome. Join us live on Past Money at 6, followed by Lions, Monday Night Magazine at 7. the action from around the majors. It's the Pennant Chase, Friday nights on Pass Sports. Welcome back, everybody. It is the news from the front office time brought to you by Office Depot. Taking care of business for companies of every size, everywhere, every day. And this is Alan Trammell's day. He'll hold a press conference after the game to announce his retirement right here at Tiger Stadium. That's the news from the front office brought to you by Office Depot. Well, there is Mr. Trammell. He got a base hit. And he's one for two in his final game. The Brewers left uh, three men on the bases in the last inning. Now they try again against Justin Thompson. Tim Unroe, the third baseman to lead it off for them. And he swings and misses. Well, speaking of Hall of Famers, uh, our old buddy, Mr. Al Kaline, just came in and gave me a little peck on the cheek and ran out of here. Hey, he didn't <laughs> stick around long. He must did be he? off the golf course early. One and one, the count on him. Ground ball hit toward short. Trammell guns it the first. He got him. Loretta is out short the first. It's Unro out short the first. And uh, Brian Banks will be the batter. Boy, it's nice to see that patented overhand throw by Alan Trammell. One nice more and time. smooth. Gets it over about chest high. He had a. Had a throw, get his throws a little higher for uh, Tony Clark. He's a little taller <laughs> than other first sackers he's thrown to. One out, nobody on. There's a foul out of play off the bat of Banks. Milwaukee got a couple of singles in the second, a couple of singles in the third. And had a walk in each inning, too. There's a foul that'll be well back in toward the seat. Well, I talked to you uh, youngsters a little bit about catching, how you can work on the drills in the garage or in the basement, your quick reaction drill with your father, your coach, 10, 15 feet away, and throw the balls in different areas and work on your glove hand speed. Talk about hitting a little bit now. Again, you can swing a lead-weighted bat, uh, stand in front of a mirror and pretend a pitcher's pitching and say it's a three-and-one count. The pitch is low and away. Pretend like you're going out and getting it. There's a lot of ways you can do those things. Uh, again, in front of a mirror, you can do it in the basement. Have your dad build up something in the basement and swing the bat 50, 60 times a day and try to improve on that short, quick uh, swing. Uh, you know, pretend there's a left-handed pitcher, a right-handed pitcher, but that's what major leaguers do, and that's why they've, uh, a lot of the reasons they've made the big leagues. And Banks fouls off another one. He's fouled off a couple now. And again, you can have a lead-weighted bat if you want to, uh, you know, improve your strength of your hands and your forearms. You know, and have a little home plate there. Don't pull away from the ball. Try to do the things we've talked about. Go back through the middle. Don't open too soon. One ball, two strikes. 
two runs, four hits for the Tigers. Milwaukee, no runs, four hits. No errors in the game. Tell you what, Justin is two, popping two. that mitt uh, better than he has recently in the last three or four outings. Full count. He's also popping that gum pretty good. <laughs> of course, there's an art to popping, uh, having the pitcher pop the mitt like that. You can make him, uh, you can deaden the sound if you want. There's a long one to left field, and it is long gone. A home run for Brian Banks, his first. And that'll cut the Tiger lead to two to one. Well, he got a pitch upstairs, a 3 2 count. Justin came in with the fastball. First home run here with the Brewers. First Major League home run. Congratulations to him. This is what you call challenge the hitter, and this time the hitter won this contest. A fastball above the belt. Here's the catcher, Kelly Stanett, and uh, he swings at a high one. Uh, strike one on Kelly, young man from Lawton, Oklahoma. Used to be with the Mets. He was also with the Cleveland Ball Club. One out, nobody on. There's a breaking ball outside. Now, I watched Kelly his first time up, and I'm watching the second time. And you youngsters, he has an open stance, but the problem is he stays open. He remains open. Watch that left foot. See how it stayed open? There's a little uh, blooper back of second. Uh, Cruz grabs it, throw it at first. He is safe. It was close. Cruz made a good play. He got it over there quickly, but uh, Sinet beat it out. He did make a good play, but talking about hitting, that is not the right way to hit. Maybe that's why he got jammed. But Cruz over to his right, bare hands it, and makes a good off-balance throw and almost got him at first base. Very close. But if, you, if you're going to have an open stance, what you want to do is stride back toward the pitcher. See, he stayed open. The ball got in on him. Todd Dunn at the plate. The ninth hitter had a single his first time up. And he fouls it away to the right of the plate. Well, even though this is the last game for both teams, Todd Dunn will be working uh, once again in the offseason. He's a model in the offseason. Models athletic wear. Big Came good out looking of the guy. University of North Florida. One and one, the count on Mr. Dunn. Led the Texas League in hitting this year. A little too early on the curveball, one and two. Here it is on supervision. Look at the break on this curveball. Went down 10 inches. Took a little bit off of it also. Had done out in front. Sharp ground ball foul down past third. Now one more tip on hitting. You notice how we were talking about the hitter previous Stennett. How he op was open with the stance and stayed open. Watch Dunn. He has an open stance but his left foot goes back towards the pitcher. That's the right way to hit if you're going to have an open stance. You see the open stance. Now he'll stride right back towards the pitcher. Ground ball uh, back toward the Cruz. He makes the tag. Throw to first. Not in time. Missing the double play but getting the front man unassisted. <laughs> Well, this was probably the only chance for Cruz to get the double play. Comes over and tags the runner and then just about gets done at first base. Here's another look at it. Gets that lead runner, which is very important, and just misses done at first base. Gerald Williams, a leadoff man coming up for the third trip. It's a line drive fair down into the left field corner. That'll be extra bases. Dunn uh, comes to third, and they'll hold him there but because of the signal of the umpire. Did the ball go in the seats? Uh, yeah. Fan, yeah, fan, oh, you reach fan, out. yeah, fan interference. 
That could have saved the Tigers a run because that never heaven knows what will happen to that ball once it hits the fence down there. So a break for the Tigers as Williams gets his 19th double of the season. A hanging off speed breaking ball. Not a good location on that pitch. Here we'll look at it one more time. Look at that. That floated up there. That's what you call just a spinner. Now let's see what happens down there. Ball on the count. Here goes the ball. Let's see what happens. Yep, there they yep. are. <laughs> Break for Detroit. Now the umpire on that play could uh, give uh, Milwaukee the run if he thinks uh, uh, they deserve it. It's not automatic that he's got to take only two. That's a matter of judgment on the part of the umpire. Well, it he used to be automatic, but they've uh, changed the interpretation. He made good judgment this time. Loretta at the bat, two and zero the count. That's fielding Culbreth of the umpire third. Three and one the count on him. We've got two in on. Dunn and Williams. And now there are three men on. So there's been a lot of traffic on the bases here, Jim, after the first inning. Yeah, there really has. And that's the third walk given up by Justin. His pitches have been upstairs. And he's thrown a, a, thrown a couple off-speed breaking balls that have just floated up there. Sorello, who's been a hot hitter, but uh, not today. He's 0 for 2. Two out, bases loaded. Here comes Fryman in from uh, third to say something to Justin. Well, probably going in to see how he's going to try to pitch Sorello. That's the only thing I can think of with two outs and the bases loaded. Looks like Casanova doing most of the talking. Two to one, the Tigers in the lead, but that lead uh, threatened right now by a bases loaded situation for Milwaukee. There are two down. They've left the five on base in the last two innings. Ball one to Jeff Cirillo. The chapel speaker today was uh, Frank Tanana. He addressed the members of the each team. Yeah, had a nice chat with Frank in there. Wanted us to say hello to all the dream campers and looking forward to coming to the dream camp again. He wants to put that uniform on again, Ernie. <laughs> yeah. High foul out of play back upstairs one and one but he does look terrific doesn't he sure does. That's done at third Williams a man at second. And low at first. A.J. Sager up in the Tiger bullpen. Fouled away that one will reach the seats. Off the facing of the upper deck. There's Sager, number 49. Oh, look at all those Tiger hats here in the stands today. A lot of youngsters. Fan Appreciation Weekend. Ground ball toward the Cruz and over to Clark and they leave at three again and at the end of the three and a half innings Tigers two, the Brewers one. News from the front. Stalag 13. Colonel Wilhelm Klink rules his POW camp with an iron fist. And you're the toughest commandant in Germany. I am? Oh. Allied POWs known as Hogan's heroes wage a secret war. 
I see nothing. I know nothing. In the USA, Hogan's Heroes, the collector's edition is now available on video. Capture your first four episodes, including the original pilot, for $4.95 with subscription. The show is fast and funny, rave TV guide. Join Colonel Hogan and his heroes, comedy heroes, for a barracks full of laughs. Solid style. Hogan's Heroes, the collector's edition. Order this TV classic on video today and get four episodes for $4.95 with subscription. And World War II will never be the same. To get your first four episode video of Hogan's Heroes, the collector's edition, for only $4.95, have your credit card ready and call toll free 1 800 253 8005. That's 1 800 253 8005. Buy the Jack's Works package at full price and we'll wash it again for free for any reason, any time during the next five days. The Jack's Works Perks free wash guarantee. Only at Jack's. More than just a car wash. Welcome back. Tiger Baseball on Passports is brought to you by Landbroke DRC. We're setting the pace in Michigan horse racing. And by the Tanglewood Golf Course. Your club for the day. Nobody knows golf like Tanglewood. 1-7-0 for Milwaukee, 2-4-0 for the Tigers. Tony Clark's two-run home run put the runs on the board for Detroit in the second inning. Bobby Hickinson at the plate, and uh, he fouls one away. Strike one on Bobby. Two runs and four hits for the Tigers. One run and seven hits for the Brewers. Bobby finishing strong. Takes the ball outside, one and one. D'Amico on the mound. Ground ball, first base. Toss over to D'Amico from Banks, and there's one up and one down. You know, Ernie, I was talking about how catchers can improve their glove hand and with drills. You can do the same thing with infielders. You can do the same type of drills in your garage or your basement, wherever, uh, working on the short hops, quick reaction drills with your glove, you know, just tossing balls to the youngsters and uh, have them catch him backhand him and so forth and work on their footwork also. Here's a Tony Clark. He put the Tigers in front with a two run homer to left. He's 26th in the second inning. Ball one the count on Tony. Line drive hit the Loretta short for the second out. Boy, that one <laughs> had a little knuckleball movement on it. Yeah, that'll be the end of that bat. He hit it uh, way up towards the end of it, and uh, he'll have to put that in the old broken bat rack. Melvin Nieves will be the Tiger batter. Melvin popped it short in the second inning. Homer from both sides in the same game twice this season. Ball one, the count on the uh, Tiger right fielder, Nieves. Two runs, four hits for Detroit, one run, seven hits for Milwaukee. There's a curve across and the count one and one. Namiko trying for his seventh win. Outside with the fastball, 2 1. Fastball fouled away. That home run that Melvin hit last night was off the outside part of the plate a good three or four inches. And when I told him that before the game, he said, Jay, I didn't realize it was that far off the plate. And I said, yes, it was. But it showed that you stayed with, with the pitch to generate that kind of power. There's a base hit into the left field quarter. Chased down by Miski. He slips and falls, and it's an easy double for Nieves. Well, this is what the Tigers want Melvin to do more of this year an off speed pitch. He waits for it on the outside part of the plate, and like the home run he hit last night, he goes to left field. And as I mentioned earlier, the grass out there is still saturated, very wet from all the rain that we've had in the air recently. And that would have been a double anyway, even though he took a little tumble out there. Raul Casanova, the batter for the uh, Tigers. Their catcher popped to second base his only time at bat. Man on uh, second, two down. It's the ball. 
Tigers lead it 2 to 1. We're in the fourth inning at Tiger Stadium, the final game of 1996. Ground ball fair inside of first off the glove of Banks. Rounding third, scoring the Aves. There goes Casanova to second. And it will be a double. Back to back doubles after two are out, upping the Tiger lead to three to one. Well, Casanova can thank the first baseman, Banks, for this double because he was over there and really thought he had it and uh, he didn't really get much a piece of it but here it is one more time fastball upstairs and he's there but uh, he looked in his glove you see him look in his glove real quickly and uh, he didn't get much leather on it over there and should have knocked it down or, or made the player at least knocked it down but that'll be a double and RBI for Casanova here's the Fausto Cruz who flied to right his only time at bat it's a strike. He got a hook across. Three to one. The Tigers on top. Each team has scored here in the fourth inning. The Tigers got their first two on a home run by Clark in the second. One and one. The count on Cruz. A deep third, a long throw for Unrow over to Banks, and the Tigers are out. They get a run. At the end of four, they lead it three to one. Now you could be the second person in America to actually sit in the driver's seat behind a new 1997 Camry. Wow, I'd love it. <laughs> Here you go. That was the right thing to say. Oh, nice dual power point. Longer wheelbase, more horsepower. At the very top, you can put your garage door open. And they even made drink holders big enough for those fruit boxes. <laughs> Seems good. like they thought of everything. Looks like they have. More features than the 96 costs less. So what do you think of the new Camry? This car is great. Get to your Toyota dealer. Find out for yourself. Passport's home of the Red Wings. Passport, home of the Pistons. Passport's home of the Spartans. Home of the Wolverines. Passport's home of the Lions. Red Wings, Pistons, Tigers, Spartans, Wolverines, and Lions coverage. Passport's home of the home teams. No one else comes close. Believe me, folks, this is no walk in the park. No day at the beach. This is no Sunday drive. This is the PGA Tour. Watch the hottest new golf show. This is the PGA Tour on Pass Sports, the source for Michigan sports. Welcome back. It is back. Big Ten football in prime time on Pass Sports. Next Saturday, the Michigan State Spartans meet the Iowa Hawkeyes. Catch Passports coverage in primetime beginning at 10.30 on Passports. Home of the Spartans and Wolverines, home of the home teams. 1-7-0, 3-6-0 for the Tigers. Matt Meese will lead it off. Little pop up over near first. It's Clark, one away. Ernie, I think we received some news that we should mention to everybody that after a 15 minute ceremony, uh, as the Tigers give away some fan appreciation prizes, uh, mainly the jerseys of the players, uh, we're going to stay here and uh, cover the Alan Trammell press conference. Yep, that's going to be sort of a bittersweet time, but it'll be fun to be there and See Alan say goodbye. 
So after the uh, approximately 15 minutes after the game. Turner Ward at the plate. He has hit into double play and fly to right. 0 for 2. Ern, is that candy good? Oh, it's Smells great. awfully good. Yep. What's inside of those? That's chocolate. All chocolate? Mm, yep. We thank all the fans for all the goodies we get, but I'm going to get fat again, partner. Oh, never happened. Not the <laughs> way you work. <laughs> Strike one count. There's a little looper that'll go foul down toward the Tiger bullpen. Tigers lead it three to one. The Brewers have left eight men on in the last three innings. Strike called. He nipped the outside corner with a little mustard. There's another pop up over toward Tony Clark. And he makes the catch this time in foul territory. Usually when teams hit pop ups now they've hit a couple pop ups here back to back that tells you that the pitcher's got his good stuff and he's getting the ball in on the hands or the batters are hit, hitting the ball even which tells you the pitcher is throwing pretty good. Well here's Mr. Unroe. He should live in Monroe. He has singled and bounced out the shortstop. Three to one Detroit Milwaukee without a runner now and two down in their fifth inning. It's the ball low. Low again, 2 and 0. Oh. Slicing foul down toward the right field, but it will be out of play. Nice day here in uh, Detroit. The clouds right now obscuring the sunshine. Tigers on top, three to one. That's a low one. When that breeze is blowing out uh, the right field, the flags are really uh, standing at attention. It's been a strong uh, breeze throughout the game. He walked him. A walk in each inning since the second. There's a breeze we were talking about favoring the left handed hitters. Well here's uh, Brian Banks who hit his first major league home run in the fourth inning. Man on first two men down. There's a strike. Do you remember your first major league home run Mr. Price. Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Well, that's an honest answer. <laughs> I didn't hit very many. I should. In the dirt. Good stop by Casanova. I remember the first game I played with the Tigers in Kansas City. I went three for four. I remember that very well and just missed a home run. Oh, you must have said, well, this is easy. Yeah, I did. <laughs> No, I would have never said that. Boy, it caught up with me in a hurry. Here's a, another foul out of play. Rex Robinson reported that Baltimore had his first game in Washington in the mid 50s. He got about four hits in the first game. He said he called his dad back in Arkansas. Say, hey, this is all right. <laughs> then he went for a. Oh, for about 15. He said, <laughs> I came back to reality. Yeah, reality sets in in a hurry in the show. One-two pitch to Banks. 
Ground the ball, hit toward third, and that's ruled a foul. In fact, the ball I hit uh, that just missed uh, going out of the ballpark it ended up being a double. Was that in KC? It was in KC, and I hit it off who the, the pitcher that was a fireman of the year the year before. I can't remember his name. Daly? No, he's a hard-throwing right-hander, sinker ball pitcher. And I got back to the bench, and Al Kaline says, don't you know who that pitcher was? And, you know, coming from yeah. Pittsburgh, I really didn't know who it was. He said he was the fireman of the year. And I said, well, I'm glad you didn't tell me that before I went out. Uh, was Jack Aker? <laughs> Jack Aker, that's who it was. Yeah. Jack Aker. Right hand is solid down. Yeah. Through good, down. Hard, hard, hard sinker, Ernie. Yeah. One two pitch to Brian Banks. And it is 2 2 now on uh, Brian. They've made the Thompson throw a lot of pitches here in the first half of the game. And the Sun's out again. That one gets away from Casanova. And on the wild pitch, Unro will take second. Fastball in the dirt. Watch Casanova try to get down and block it. He did the, the right things. He kept the glove between his legs, but that was one of those bounces that hit off kind of the heel of his glove and just bounced away so the runner could advance. There's a drive to left. That's going to be trouble. It'll be off the wall. Rounding third coming home is Unro, and it's an easy double for Brian Banks, who's had a walk, a home run, and a double so far. Well, the report on this Brian Banks were all very good, and in this ball game, a walk, a home run, and now a double to drive in another run. He looks very good at the plate, and he hits from both sides of the plate, so a good-looking young hitter, another good-looking young hitter for this Milwaukee ball club. You see how he kept his head behind the ball and drove the bat head through the strike zone. And a sure double. That cuts the Tiger lead to three to two here in the fifth inning. They are still alive with a man at second and two down. Stanett, the uh, catcher at the plate, and backs off from an inside fastball from Justin Thompson. Stanett has bounced the first and singled. Got an infield hit to deep second base. Big curve is in close to an O. Yeah, Justin has got his pitches upstairs, and he has not had that good breaking ball since the first or second inning. That good hard breaking ball, it's kind of been a floater. Little pop up into the middle of the infield. Here comes Cruz to put it away, and that retires the side. At the end of four and a half, the Tigers lead him at three to two. If you like your music hot and heavy, you want Rock This Way, a great new collection of 36 hard rocking hits. Living on a lighted stage approaches the unreal. Rock This Way, 36 great songs on two cassettes or two CDs. Here's how to order. Call toll-free 1-800-253-8005. Call from U.S. or Canada. That's 1-800-253-8005. Or send 1998 for two cassettes or 2698 for two CDs, plus 495 shipping to the address on your screen. Welcome back. It is time to recap the game scoring brought to you by Fago Beverages. And when was the last time you had a good slug? of Red Pop. Yes, sir. Tony Clark with a two-run home run in the second inning to the nothing Detroit. In the fourth inning, this young man, Banks, who looks very good at the plate for Milwaukee with a solo shot, his first home run in the big leagues, made it two to one. Still in the fourth inning, Casanova with a double down the right field line, put Detroit up three to one. Also in the fourth inning, Banks with an RBI double, that made it three to two. I think Jeff D'Amico during the pitching for Milwaukee, 2 8 and 0 for the Brewers, 3 6 and 0 for the Tigers. Mm -hmm. 
Here come the Tykes the bat now. Last half of the fifth inning. And there's a strike called on Mr. Barty. Had a beautiful bunt single in the third. And he checked his swing. One and one on Kim. Two and one, they count on Barty. Well, Ernie, you're right. Uh, these goodies from Beth, from Taylor, are outstanding. Well, just keep on chopping. <laughs> well, I got to have a sample every little bit of everything. <laughs> Ground ball glove by the third baseman Unro. Throw to first. He got him. What a play by Unro on the speedy Barty to take a double away from him. I'm going to tell you something. You will never see a finer play than this at third base. This is a sure double. Look at him. Quick reaction. Leaps. Backhands it. Now he's able to get up, sidearm the ball to first base, and get a very speedy runner. That is a terrific play by Unro, the third baseman. Easy double, Ernie, if, that, if he doesn't catch that ball. Here's Curtis Pride, the Tiger leadoff man. is 0 for 1. He's bounced out and had a sacrifice. There's a curve across from D'Amico. Well, that's one of the great things about baseball. No matter whether the game means anything or not, you can still see some uh, great, great plays by these uh, true professionals. Fastball uh, jams him in the count one and one. I notice A.J. Sager throwing uh, in the Tiger Bolt, and that usually means that uh, the pitcher would be probably finished. Tigers in the lead at three to two in the fifth inning. That one uh, bounces foul into the dugout of the Milwaukee Brewers. Mr. Sager. Uh, getting ready. Backed him up with an inside and high curve. Well, the umpire's job is never done, I guess. A little piece of paper blowing on the field. As we say, policing the area. Ground ball foul. That one came down on the handle of the bat, and I think that will go on the discarded pile. Yeah, another $27 down the tubes. You know, even though the Tigers are winning in this ball game three to two, I think D'Amico has looked pretty good today. That home run to Tony Clark, a, a big hit. But uh, this young man, they're counting on him for the future for this Milwaukee Brewer Ball Club. One of the, the, the places they, they would like to improve is pitching and catching. The, uh, the couple catchers they have in the ball club, Ernie, are probably good backup catchers. They need a number, good number one catcher. But D'Amico looks like he has a bright future. Well, Mr. Pride has another bat in hand now. He comes up with a 2-2 count on him. One out, the base is empty. The Tigers on top, 3-2 to two in the last half of the fifth inning. There's a pop foul. May reach the seats. Here is Stanett. He'll have room, and he drops the ball. Well, the wind brought this ball back. It should be an easy play for the catcher right there, but uh, he just uh, had a hard time uh, watching the ball go in his glove. See him throw the mask away out of his range and just hits in his glove and uh, bounces out. That's the first error of the game by either side. 2-2 Two -two the count on Pride. Full count on him.
Alan Tramo waiting on deck playing his final game as a Tiger. Still three and two. him a patient at bat for pride brings him off here's Trammell again and again getting a standing ovation There goes the runner, and the throw goes into center field. Pride gets up, goes to third. Here's the throw by Gerald Williams. Not in time. It'll be a steal and a throwing error against the net. So two errors in this inning on the catcher's to net. He dropped the pop-up. Now he throws a ball into center field. But Curtis Pride had an outstanding jump on Jeff D'Amico. Here it is. See, he has a long stride talking about D'Amico and Sinet bounces the ball down. It hit on in the infield grass. That's how short the throw was. You see Pride uh, run into the shortstop Loretta and knock him down and into third base. Trammell at the bat, the infield in on him, and uh, he takes the hook across. Allen the bounce the third in the first inning. He singled in the third. Got a chance for an RBI right here. The Tigers lead it three to two. Nice to see him add one more RBI to his statistics. He takes one outside. Well, Jim, you see that sign there? What a game. They could put an R on that and make it what a gamer foul and trammel. That's true. As we take a look at that throw once again, look where it hit in the infield grass. And then Curtis right into Loretta. And bowls him over. Fly ball hit the center. That might get that run in. Darrell Williams throwing to the plate. Here comes Pride. He scores. It'll be RBI sacrifice fly for Tram. And the Tigers up there lead the four to two. Well, the Tigers scored this one on a walk, an error first, then a walk after Pride was kept alive. Then a stolen base, another error by the catcher, and now sacrifice fly. Not very pretty, was it? Nope. Here's Fryman, and he gets a slow curve on the outside corner. Travis has fouled to the catcher and uh, hit into a double play, lining a ball to second base for the DP. One and one on the Tiger third baseman. That's a strike on the outside corner. Too close. Make it 2 2. Detroit, four runs, six hits, no errors. Milwaukee, two runs, eight hits, and two errors. Fouled away on the high fastball. Nice enough weather where Larry Young can uh, wear his uh, sports shirt. The base umpires have their jackets on. 2 2 pitch to Travis Feynman. A pop up over near first base. That's Banks. 
And he makes a catch to retire the side. At the end of five, the Detroit is leading four to two. It's their turf. It's their world. It's their game. And when we don't play by their rules, the results can be deadly. From the creator of the award-winning television series Wild America comes a home video unlike anything you've ever seen. These are nature's dangerous encounters, captured in one of the most astonishing wildlife films ever made and available now for the first time as a special one-hour home video. Call this toll-free number now to get Dangerous Encounters for just $19.95. It is not available in stores. Order now, and you'll also receive Watching Wildlife absolutely free. That's right. Both of these extraordinary programs are yours for just $19.95. Call now. For rush delivery, get your credit card ready and call 1-800-253-8005. That's 1-800-253-8005. Or send your check or money order to the address on your screen. Call now. Seven Ski Doo snowmobiles have arrived for Super Celebration. You can buy now without paying a cent until January. Plus, get two free videos as party gifts. Join the fun at the Ski Doo Super Celebration. You can win a new snowmobile. For details, come into your Northwest Michigan Ski Doo dealer or call 1 800 9 Ski Doo. Jack's Facts, brought to you by Jack. More than just a car wash. for the Tigers and what a World Series for Alan Trammell. New pitcher for the Tigers will be A.J. Sager. There he is A.J. last pitched a couple days ago against the Brewers. He went two and two thirds innings gave up three hits. He gave up one earned run and he walked one sinker slider ball pitcher A.J. Sager and uh, he delivers to Don who hits the ground ball to Trammell the throw to Clark uh, gets him. So Allen just uh, keeps on throwing guys out at first base. There you see Sager's number numbers on the year four and five 493 ERA he has thrown 76 and two thirds innings walked 29 and he has struck out 49. Former University of Toledo quarterback. And all in all Ernie I thought has done an OK job with the Tigers since he came over. Yes three and now he'll face a young man from Grambling State that's uh, Gerald Williams who has gone one for three this afternoon to double his last time up. Ball one, the count on Williams. Native of the New Orleans. Four two, the Tigers on top. Sager gets a strike across to make the count two and one on Williams. Boy, Justin Thompson, five innings, a hundred pitches, Ernie. Boy, mm. that's a lot of pitches uh, through five innings. Foul on the ground, over toward third, and they count two two on uh, Darrell. So Thompson can be the winning pitcher. He cannot be the loser. Ground ball on the right side. Tony Clark lets it get under his glove and then it gets by Cruz on under the right field. That will be a single for Williams. Well, the Brewers have had a hit in every inning except the first when they went out one two three. Did I hear that right a base hit. That's right. OK uh, here we see Tony uh, the ball right at him and uh, just missed the ball and uh, if, if you'd ask Tony if he should have made that play he'd tell you he should have in fact he probably wandered too far to his right that was an easier play for Todd Cruz but uh, a gift base hit. 
Williams on with the one man down 4 2 Tiger lead and uh, Mark Loretta with a single on the walk bounce out the third at the plate. He starts to bunt and takes the ball. That's the ninth Milwaukee hit. Everybody in the lineup has a hit except Cirillo and the Ward. Williams has two and the Banks has two. Banks has been the big gun for the Brewers with a home run and a double. Man at first is Gerald Williams. Knocks it down. Oh, what a play! Oh. Throws the first. He got him. Oh baby, was that, that acrobatic? Oh, or? I wish you'd have held on to that ball because he would have probably been able to get the double play. <laughs> what an acrobatic play! The ball is hit hard. Might have been a base hit through the middle. Watch him backhand it behind his back. Look at that. <laughs> then it comes out of his glove as he reached to get it to throw to second base. Oh, that would have been in every highlight film from now to eternity. But they get one on the play anyway. <laughs> oh, Here's Cirillo at the plate now. Jeff is struck out, fouled out the right, and the bounce to second. He's hit to the ball to the right side the two times he hit it. Sager delivers the ball. For two, the Tigers on top in their final game of the year. Young man can feel good about his season. Jeff Cirillo. One and one. In fact, a lot of these Brewers can feel good about their season. So many of them, five or six of them, really increased their batting average, all their statistics from previous years. That's Williams on second. One and two on Jeff Cirillo. Hey Ernie, when you think about how long this season is, the the, tra the traveling you have to do, not many off days because the, uh, the Players Association basically outlawed doubleheaders, so they don't get many off days. And you think somebody hits 325, 330 in this day and age, uh, that is really good hitting. Now Cirillo fouls this one off. He got up on the plate a little farther that time. He moved up uh, right before the pitch, almost up to the first chalk line. Well, he tried to get that sinker ball before he got in on his hands. I tell you, I've known some pitchers uh, throughout the years. They see a batter do that, and uh, they don't like it very much. Well, the guy's got a right to do it if he wants to. Well, he does, but he's got to take his life in his hands, yeah. too. They can do anything they want, but they have to pay the price. One two pitch to Cirillo, and it's a wide one, two two. Tigers on top for two. The Brewers are batting in the sixth inning. They've got two out of the man at second. Struck him out. And the Tigers bat in the sixth ahead four to two. Melanoma skin cancer before it gets under your skin. Examine yourself regularly and see a dermatologist. 
past weeknights at 6 o'clock for highlights, features, and interviews. And recently, new Red Wing announcer, play-by-play -play announcer Mike Goldberg commented on what it would be like to follow only one team again after spending a couple years covering the entire NHL for ESPN. To be detached from loyalty for the last two years was really different for me and difficult at times because you want to have time to get to know the insides of the players, to tell the sidebar stories that are really, really attractive, the only stories that you find out if you're with the team all the time. Mm -hmm. And when you cover the games on a national basis, you're in, you're out, and we may do 15 Red Wings games in one season on ESPN because obviously they're focused nationally all the time, but I may do six of them and they may come six weeks apart, sure. Steve. So you really don't get that feel, and I miss that. And that's the one thing that when I was in Chicago, and I know Chicago's a bad word to some people. <laughs> he but said when that I was, C word again. Right, but when I was there, I was able to, to have that kind of feel for the teams. And that's why that uh, my family, my wife and I decided we'd like to get back into that situation where we had a home, we had a community, we had continuity, and definitely build a long career here. That's live on past weeknights at 6 o'clock. Hey, and Ernie, how about this wonderful letter? We've received so many wonderful letters, and this young lady, Betty Haggerty from Marshall, Michigan, wrote a beautiful letter. Been following the Tigers since Ty Tyson, Schoolboy Rowe, Marv Owen, Goose Goslin, and she even says in the back, P.S. Ernie, I love your books. Oh, oh, well, good for her. We appreciate that. <laughs> Betty Haggerty. There's a foul out of play off the bat of Bobby Higginson, one and one on Bobby. We appreciate all those wonderful letters and especially the wonderful phone calls uh, that we receive. Appreciate your support. And we want to welcome Mike Goldberg to the announcing uh, ranks, the new uh, Red Wing announcer. We know he'll do a great job here. There's a ball in too close on Bobby. Two and one the count on him. How many books have you written, Ernie? Uh, three. Three. And uh, portions of others, but okay. uh, only three they can completely blame me for. Are there a couple of copies left? Oh, oh not you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Two two the count on Bobby. I have all of them too. All I'm right. Proud, proud to say with your signature in. I'm going to give you a written test on them next <laughs> week. <laughs> oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Full count on Bobby Higginson. Will it be multiple choice? Right. I'm good. No, at it's going to be it's going to be written a oh. theme theme question. <laughs> Ray's throwing in the bullpen now for the Brewers. There's a sharp ground ball hit foul down past the first base. Well, the starter, Mr. D'Amico, is still in there, but uh, Al Ray is in the bullpen. 3 2 pitch to Higginson. Swung on and hit to short left. Here comes a Miski in and puts it away. One up and one down in the Tigers sixth inning. They're on top by a four to two count. Here's the man that uh, got him on top in the second inning with a two run homer, Tony Clark. And the next time up, he lined a short. There's a high fly ball that deep to right. Might be. It is long gone. Another Tony Clark home run, his second of the afternoon, and number 27 of the year. Five to two Tigers. Well, what can you say about Tony Clark? Just another tremendous home run, and that is another Fago home run. Christine Gilchrist of West Bloomfield gets a free case of Fago. Her favorite charity gets five free cases. A mammoth drive in the bleachers deep right center field off the bat of Tony Clark the pitch about knee high the inside part of the plate. Look how he stays back behind that ball and swung the bat through the strike zone with a lot of authority. Watch the ball jump off his bat. Tony Clark with an outstanding year. Now follow this ball into the bleachers. Look how high it is into the bleachers right up there then it bounces back onto the field tremendous and, home run and Jim he has taken the home run the leadership on the uh, Tiger team away from uh, Bobby Higgins now well I tell you this young man uh, with that power for both sides of the plate I talk to Tony just about every day and he is concerned about his strikeouts and he really wants to improve on that but again if he is surrounded Ernie by some folks that don't strike out as much it wouldn't look as devastating you know as many times as he strike out as he strikes out. 
Well, Don Rowe made a trip to the mound. He's the pitching coach, and he goes back to the dugout. Here's the Nieves. And Melvin uh, looks at a sharp curve in for a strike. He's had a pop to short and a double. 5 2. The Tigers on top in the sixth inning with a one out and nobody on. He got the corner with that one. The estimate on the distance of that the Clark home run is 427 feet. Mm, baby. I want to wish a happy 30th birthday to Bob Rosano, who's at the game today with his family. Happy 30th birthday, Ernie. You remember? Oh, absolutely. 30. A Co couple of years Three ago. Three years ago, right? Yeah. Young Melvin, first full year in the big leagues, 24 home runs. Get that one, one number 24, last night to left field. One, two pitch to him. And he takes the wide one, a 2 2 on the Nieves. Clark with a couple of home runs, Nieves with a double, Casanova with a double. Swung right through that one, and that's a strikeout for Jeff D'Amico. That's Jeff's first strikeout of the game. Tell you what, even though the wind is blowing to right field, that didn't ho help Tony Clark's home run at all. That was a uh, quite a shot off his bat. Raul Casanova has uh, popped the second and doubled. Ball one, the count on the Tiger catcher. Five runs, seven hits for Detroit, two runs and nine hits for the Brewers. There's a strike called. One and two, they count on him. I noticed Jeff D'Amico, uh, last inning and this inning, has dropped his motion down a little bit where he's getting a little more movement on his fastball, moving away from left-handed hitters. Earlier, he was coming over the top more with not a lot of movement. That's a high one, and the count is 2-2. Two -two. Ground ball is short. A low runner to Banks. And the Tiger is out in the sixth. We go to the seventh inning. There's a Tiger lead, five to two. Oh, we're definitely, definitely helping to clean up the environment. I feel good, you know, I did something today to help out somebody else. You learn as you do. In the Coast Guard, I've learned environmental science. The more we protect the environment, the better place the world will be. I can't believe I get paid for this. Ow! In the law of the jungle, it's survival of the deadliest. These are the weapons that changed history, and this is their story. Brute Force is the ultimate video history of weapons in war, in a collection only from Time Life Video. Join host George C. Scott and watch man's never-ending search for the ultimate weapon. See the latest smart weapons tested on the battlefield, and look back at the breakthroughs and disasters along the way. Go airborne with your first video, Fighters, for just $9.99, and see the complete history of airplanes at war. Call now, and we'll also send you aircraft carriers absolutely free. That's two videos for the price of one. Future videos each trace the complete evolution of a single weapon system. See how it feels to have the ultimate weapon weapon on your side. Call now and order. To order your brute force and receive your free aircraft carriers for only $9.99, call 1-800-253-8005 or send $9.99 plus $349 shipping to the address below. Welcome back. 2-9 and 2 for Milwaukee for the Tigers. 5-7 and 0. Oh. Thanks to Tony Clark. Two home runs here this afternoon. And I'll tell you what, Ernie, he's hit him with style. The first one over 400 feet the left field. The next one 400 and at least 25 feet to the upper deck in right center field the deepest one of the deepest parts of Tiger Stadium you don't see a lot of home runs 
hit up in that bleacher area up there at all to the right of center field and the left of center field. And uh, Tony Clark has done it once again. So Tony with 27 home runs. Fryman has a 22. Higginson has 26. Nieves a 24. And pretty good home run production from those guys. Here's Matt Miske now to lead it off for the Brewers. The Michigander has had a single a walk and a pop up to first base. And it's a ball low to Matt. Seventh inning, Tigers on top, 5 2. 2 0 on Miski. Steve Sparks and the uh, Brewer bullpen. Miski hits one <laughs> foul and almost gets Mr. Colbert down there. Back of third base. Young man from the uh, Spartanburg, uh, South Carolina area. Line shot. Good footwork by the umpire. They have to be alert. And also make the call. 2-1 pitch to Matt Miski. He checked his swing. It's a 3-1 count now. Mark Johnson over at first base says he didn't go across on it. Sager on the mound. Gets his second strike. Full count on Miski. Well, the Brewers have had a hit in every inning except the first when the start of Thompson got him out one, two, three. Fly ball, left center. Here comes Barty, and he grabs it on the run. Mayor Barty with that good jump on the fly ball and hauls it in, makes an easy play out of it. One down, nobody on for the Brewers, and Turner Ward will be the batter, this time hitting from the other side of the plate. He's off for three and uh, takes a strike. Outside, not many fly balls today. Each side has had a couple of outfield putouts of fair balls. He went on that one. Uh oh. He tried to hold up, but he <laughs> went across. Well, let's take a look at this one. I wasn't sure about that. Yeah, I guess he did. Boy, they're right so many uh, of the times on that uh, particular call. 2-1 pitch uh, coming to Ward. Got him. Well, after coming inside, this time he tries to hit the outside part of the plate with a breaking ball, and he does. Uppercut swing from Turner Ward. Two out, nobody on. Unro will be the bat. He's had a single bounce to Alan Trammell at short. And a walk after which he scored a run. 5 2, Detroit on top. Pop up foul off a of first. Tony Clark near the dugout makes it 1 2 3 in the Milwaukee seventh. The Tigers bat in the seventh with a 5 to 2 advantage. The law of the jungle, its survival of the deadliest. These are the weapons that changed history, and this is their story. Brute Force is the ultimate video history of weapons in war, in a collection only from Time Life Video. 
Join host George C. Scott and watch man's never-ending search for the ultimate weapon. See the latest smart weapons tested on the battlefield and look back at the breakthroughs and disasters along the way. Go airborne with your first video, Fighters, for just $9.99 and see the complete history of airplanes at war. Call now and we'll also send you aircraft carriers absolutely free. That's two videos for the price of one. Future videos each trace the complete evolution of a single weapon system. See how it feels to have the ultimate weapon weapon on your side. Call now and order. To order your brute force and receive your free aircraft carriers for only $9.99, call 1-800-253-8005 or send $9.99 plus $349 shipping to the address below. It's time for the seventh inning stretch storyline brought to you by Landbroke DRC. We're setting the pace in Michigan horse racing. And here it is. Tony Clark with a big day. Two mammoth home runs. He's driven in three. D'Amico did a Okay job for the Brewers. Six innings, seven hits, four on runs, one strikeout. Thompson, okay for the Tigers, even though he gave up eight hits over five innings, two earned runs, four walk, and one strikeout. New pitcher for Milwaukee will be Steve Sparks. Sparks taking over. The young man is four and seven on the year, 667 ERA, 87 and two thirds innings. He's walked 52, and he has struck out. 21. He is a knuckleball breaking ball pitcher. Will not throw as many knuckleballs as your typical knuckleball pitcher. He can sneak that fastball by you also. He was optioned to New Orleans uh, August 2nd and then recalled by the Brewers September 25th. Fausto Cruz, the first man to face the new pitcher, Sparks, takes the ball outside. 5-2, tags on top in the final game of the year. 1-1 one one on Pasto. Another pointer I want to get out the way. today uh, concerns how you grip the ball. Now, this can go for outfielders and catchers, but when they made me into a catcher with Pittsburgh, they said, Jim, you need to grip the ball uh, cross seam and when you throw to second base you want to pull down on the ball so you want to get a fast uh, cross it, seam. It hit sparks and bounces foul it'll be a base hit he took a shot there Jim boy he sure did Bausto uh, drilled that ball right back at him and uh, can't tell if it hit him flush or he got part of his glove on it trainer John Adams is going to come out and take a look at him yeah, here's another look at it. Boy, he really rifles this ball right back at him. Boy, that's dangerous. But talking about gripping the ball, and, and what they had me do was even at nighttime in, uh, when I was in bed, I'd have a catcher's mitt on, I'd take a baseball and throw it in my glove without looking and practice on gripping the ball cross seam without even looking at it. And if you're an outfielder, you can do the same thing. You can uh, practice throwing the ball in your glove. Don't look at it and try to grab the ball with a cross seam fastball and come out throwing the ball that way. It's amazing what those little things can do to help you Ernie. Well Mr. Garner came out hatless to uh, see what's going on. I don't know whether Phil uh, left this hat in the clubhouse or in the dugout or just didn't wear it today. Maybe he ran so fast that uh, he outran it like Willie Mays used to. We're going to have a little audition now for Sparks. There's Mr. Garner. Boy, he looks different without that hat on, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Maybe he wanted to get a little air time without the hat on, even though Milwaukee's not televising. <laughs> show the Michigan fans here. You think there's some talent scouts yeah. uh, looking in? Is that the reason? But that little pointer that I talked about is so important for catchers and for outfielders. And if you grip the ball that way, you don't get a lot of movement on it. And uh, we've seen catchers this year throw to second base where the ball will sink on them, go into the runner. And if you grab it like that and pull down on the ball, you get that good spin on the ball. Here's a Kim Bartiz out of Bunt Siegel. He's bounced the third on a great play by the third baseman Unro that nipped him the last time he batted. They've got the infield in a little close on. Marty. He takes a strike on the outside corner.
Five runs and eight hits for Detroit, two runs and nine hits for Milwaukee. The Brewers have been charged with two errors, both to, to the catcher, Stanette. Here's a bump back to the mound. Throw to first by Sparks over to Banks, and it's another sacrifice, moving Cruz into second. Curtis Pride, the Tiger leadoff man coming up now. He has bounced to second, sacrificed and walked, so he has 0 for 1 officially today. Tigers on top, 5 to 2. Curtis is still under that 300 mark. He's right now batting a 298. Strike. That's Cruz are coming down the line from second. Ground ball right side. Cirillo has an easy play. Over to Banks and on to third will go Cruz on the bounce out. Now Alan Chamel and he'll get another ovation. Let's listen. I think this is the biggest standing ovation he's got this afternoon. Well, this probably will be his last time at bat as a Tiger. There's a strike call. I think it would have lasted a lot longer, but the play resumed and uh, the folks finally had to quit. Allen has bounced the third, singled, and hit a sacrifice fly. There's a ground ball to the third baseman. Unruh throw to first, and that ends the Tigers' seventh inning. At the end of seven, they lead it five to two. Do you know you might be spending double what you need to for your life insurance? Have a pencil ready. In a moment, I'll give you a toll-free number you can call to find out. American Republic Insurance Company has a breakthrough buying system for purchasing low-cost, high-quality term life insurance. By using an 800 number, you now buy direct from the company. These are policies that can also save you hundreds of dollars a year. Want proof? $30 a month, just a dollar a day, buys $369,000 of coverage for a man age 35. Also, for a dollar a day, a woman age 35 can buy $430,000 of coverage. And these rates are guaranteed level for 10 years. Get your free no-obligation custom quote and full information. Call the company direct at 1-800-253-8005. American Republic, the direct-to-you way to buy the most term life insurance at a truly low cost. Stop overspending. Call this toll-free number today. 1-800-253-8005. A.J. Sager doing a good job for the Tigers since he has come in. Has that sinker ball working and that good slider. 2-9-2 two, two for Milwaukee. 5-8-0 oh for the Tigers. Banks will be leading off. He's been the toughest hitter. He's walked in a home run and a double. Two RBIs. Counting for both the Milwaukee runs. Well, the reports on Banks were good coming into the ball game, and he has not disappointed anybody. He has looked good at the plate. Big guy from Brigham Young takes his cut, and it bounces off the mid of Casanova. Well, if the game stays this way, Justin Thompson will be the winner. Be good to see him end the year with a win. Outside, uh, one and one the count. Tigers have five runs, eight hits. The Brewers have two runs and nine hits. Wind blowing out toward the right. There's a base hit, and he's got a single, a double, and a home run, and a walk now. 
three for three from Mr. Banks. Well, this is good hitting. It's uh, A.J. sinker ball. And again, I've talked so many times to the youngsters out there about taking what the pitcher will give you. Doesn't overswing. The ball is away from him, moving away from him, and he stays on the ball and hits it hard in the left field. If he tries to pull that ball, it's a ground ball out probably. Here's the net now. The catchers bounce the first single and the pop the second. They've got the infield in double play depth against him. And he looks at the ball. There's a strike call. The Tigers already have executed one double play started by Alan Trammell back in the second inning. Short to second to first. Man at first, that's Banks. Two strikes. Boy, that was a good look at that open stance, and uh, even with an open stance, he opens more with the pitch. Rice. Flory down the bullpen for the Brewers. He tipped it off the mid of the Casanova and stays alive. Well, a good day for the blacking around the eyes and the sunglasses. There's a Lima in the bullpen. A wide one, uh, two two. Five two Tigers. Brewers batting in the eighth inning. They've got their leadoff man on with a single. Two two pitch. Stinnett strikes out. Now the second, the third strikeout by Sager. As I mentioned, A.J. with a good sinker this afternoon. Watch the movement on that ball. See how it dropped underneath the bat of Stanette. Now watch him pull away from the ball. Tough to keep your head on the ball when you step in the bucket like that. Todd Dunn, a single hit into force and bounced to short. And again, they're in a double play depth for the Tigers. Detroit leading 5-2, to two, eighth inning. Drive up the gap in right center. Barty on the chase. He makes a good stop in deep right center. Rounding third, headed home to score is Banks. And that will cut the Tiger lead to five to three. But Barty made a good cutoff over there in the gap. It's a double for Dunn. Well, this was an extra base hit all the way off the bat of Dunn. Stays behind the ball, and Buggy whips it into right center field. But only the speed of Barty able to cut it off. If that ball gets by him, that's probably a triple for Dunn. But uh, that speed of Barty comes through again. Uh, the skipper, Buddy Bell, out. That usually means uh, there's going to be a little change for the Tigers. And looks like it will be. Jose Lima was throwing in the bullpen and he'll be coming in. But a good job by A.J. Sager. We'll take a break and then fill you in on Jose when we come back. Take strokes off your game. Guaranteed. Jack Nicholas's personal technique that helps straighten slices. Take strokes off your game. Guaranteed. Dave Peltz's revolutionary technique that has even the pros putting more accurately. Take strokes off your game. Guaranteed. Get out of sand without sweat. Greg Norman's Earth Mover Secret shows you how. Guaranteed. Now take two, three, four, even more strokes off your game with the secrets you'll get in your free issue of Golf Magazine. Take strokes off your game. Guaranteed. Master teacher Jim McLean's simple secret to longer, straighter tee shots every time. Call now to get your free issue of Golf Magazine, plus receive your free Golf Magazine umbrella. Shoot lower, play better, or you don't pay. That's the Golf Magazine guarantee. Call now for your free no-obligation issue of Golf Magazine. If you decide to subscribe, get 11 more issues, 12 in all, for just $16.97. 
plus this golf magazine umbrella free with your paid subscription. Call now. Welcome back. Jose Lima with a five and six record. Three saves. 570 ERA. 71 innings. He's walked only 22 and has had 56 strikeouts. He last pitched the 25th of this month in the Toronto series. He went two innings, gave up two hits, one earned run. He walked one and he struck out two. Now Jose has 37 strikeouts in his last 40 and two thirds innings. That is outstanding and he was the Tiger pitcher of the month for July when he went three and one with a 2.50 ERA. Jose with that fastball breaking ball and an outstanding changeup. Two types of changeups uh, more or less a straight change to right handed hitters and a circle change where he comes across the ball with good movement away from the left handed hitter. So Lima now the pitcher for the Tigers. Uh, Gerald Williams will be the batter in the first inning. He bounces second in the third. He tapped back of the pitcher in the fourth. He doubled and he singled in the sixth inning. So the Milwaukee leadoff men with two for four steps in now with one out a man at second. The Tigers on top five to three. It's the eighth inning. Lima becomes the third Tiger pitcher. Fast ball high and wide ball one. Clouds beginning to gather here at the corner. It's a ball on away on a breaking pitch. Two Ernie, and oh. Ernie, when you look at pluses this year for the Tigers that we've named, you know, Melvin Nieves, Tony Clark, Mark Lewis, and so forth. Uh, you got to look at Jose Lima also out of the pitching staff. He has uh, been greatly improved this year. There's a pop foul back of the plate. But it'll be out of play on the screen. And as we've said so many times, pitching is really where it begins. Jose doing a fine job. Mike Myers done a good job out of the bullpen. Richie Lewis, the bullpen at times this year, was really, really did a good job. That's done at second. Williams uh, swings and misses. The bat goes over into the box seats. And the count 2 2 on Gerald Williams. Boy, oh boy, I tell you, Jose threw this ball right by Williams, and he just lets see the right hand bring the bat over. And thank goodness it did not hit anybody in the stands. Now they'll bring the bat back, but they'll give that fan another bat. So uh, the fans that got a little excited here should not because they're going to give him another bat. You better boo. That's right. Get it back. Always so dangerous when a bat like that flies into the stands and. 2 2 pitch. Struck him out. Lima gets the strikeout on the first man he faces. Two down in the eighth. Well, another strikeout for Jose. There it is, the fastball right by him. Boy, Williams was not ready for that type of pitch. Mark Loretta, the shortstop, with a single and a walk. One for three for Mark this afternoon. 5-3, Tigers on top. There's a strike, Mr. Young said so. Fouled over toward the Tiger dugout.
Thompson started went five innings. Sager went two and a third. Now Lima in. That's done on second. Two strikes on Loretta. Fly ball toward the gap. It might get up the alley. It does. Barty comes over to cut it off, and he'll hold with a long single to knock in another run and cut the Tiger lead to one, five to four. Loretta with an RBI single here with two out in the eighth inning. And that was good base running by Loretta. Not only did he hit a ball in the gap, but Barty over to cut it off quickly. Pitch right down the middle of the plate, but Loretta put the brakes on. He had to believe that was a sure double, but Barty gets over there quickly to cut this ball off and gets it in. Now he held up. He wanted to make sure that the run scored. If he'd have tried for a double and he's thrown out before the runner touches the plate, that run wouldn't have scored. So credit Loretta with good base running. Jeff Cirillo, who does not have a hit tonight, takes a ball low. He struck out, foul to right, bounced the second, and uh, struck out again. That's dropped him down to 324. Man on with two down. The Tigers run. One run lead now, five to four. Throw to first. He's back. 2 and 0 on Cirillo. Mike Myers in the Tiger bullpen once again. We talked before the game. I said, Mike, you got another one in you? He said, you better believe it. <laughs> he fouls this one back, and this will be out of play. Whoa. Ernie, that hit right above you here. Yeah, the uh, little noise in the attic. Two and one. That's the count on Jeff Cirillo. Well, Milwaukee's made it close. They've come back with a pair here in the eighth inning to cut the Tiger lead to five to four. There's a drive to left. It is a fair ball in the corner, and that might tie the game. Coming around third, uh, running hard. And the scoring is Loretta, and the game is tied five to five on another double. Well, Jeff Cirillo with his first base hit of the ball game. Fastball right down the heart of the plate of the again. Jose with not lo good location on a location on his pitches. A sure double. Now Bobby gets over there. He plays the wall perfectly, but he doesn't hit the cutoff man Trammell. And I'm not sure if they had had him at the plate or not, but I think there would have been a play. But Bobby's throw over the cutoff man, a mistake by Bobby on that relay. Five to five in the eighth inning. Miski pops it up over near first base on the first pitch. Tony Clark is there to make the catch and now the Tigers bat in the last half of the eighth. It is a 5-5 tie. You know, ideas and inventions come from people in all walks of life. And most of the century's top inventions came from individuals, not companies. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? Are you interested in trying to submit your idea to companies for a good faith review and in trying to patent it as well? If so, Invention Submission Corporation has information to help you get started. ISC is America's largest inventor service firm with over 50 offices nationwide. Call this toll-free number now to see how to get this free information. The information includes forms to assure confidentiality, a form to record and date your idea, plus an informative brochure that explains how to submit your idea to companies through ISC's data bank and how to apply for a patent. Even if you only have an idea for improving an existing product, you'll want to call now for ISC's free information. For your free inventor's information, call Invention Submission Corporation now at 1-800-253-8005. That's 1-800-253-8005. So we thought we'd stop and see what some really important people think about the new 1997 Camry. Well, what do you think? 
It's very nice. You've got an enormous room. amount of, sure uh, of leg room back there. You really do. So you don't have the kids sitting in the back seat that are kicking the back of the seat all the time with their knees that drive you crazy. Now, why don't you come on around the driver's seat? You're the very first that has been in the new 1997 Camry. I, I think that's an omen, don't you? That is an I omen. I think I need one. Thousands like it are heading to your Toyota dealer showroom right now. So come on out and take a look. Welcome back. Tiger Baseball on Fast Sports is brought to you by Just For Men Hair Coloring. Just For Men, the leader in men's hair coloring, blends away gray in only five minutes. I want to show you that mistake by Bobby in left field as he bare hands this ball. Does not hit the cutoff man. Look at it. Over the head of Trammell and the ball just goes to nowhere's land, but there would have been a play at the plate had he hit the cutoff man there. New pitcher is Bryce Flory for the Brewers. He came over in the trade with the San Diego Padres along with Mark Newfield and Ron Valone in exchange for Greg Vaughn and a player to be named later. He's uh, only pitched 18 innings. He's walked 13 and struck out 11. He's a sinker slider ball pitcher. So Flory the pitcher. And uh, Fryman, the first man to face him, takes the ball. Bryce uh, Flory, a native of uh, Charleston, South Carolina, was a shortstop in high school, went to Butler University and uh, Central Arizona College. Delivers a strike on the inside corner, one and one on Travis. And Ernie, it, all of a sudden, we're tied up here. I wasn't looking for that. <laughs> were you? <laughs> the Tigers weren't either. No. Two strikes on the Travis. Well, the Tigers had a lead of five to two. The Milwaukee's have come back with three in the eighth to deadlock the game. It's a ball low, two two on uh, Travis Fryman. Flory uh, gets the ball up there in uh, with good speed, good movement on his pitches. He was the uh, Padres' number five draft choice in the June 1988 uh, draft. There's a little chopper fouled at the plate. Two two, the count on the Tiger third baseman. Travis Fryman. Big breeze has been blowing out all afternoon toward right field. 2 2 pitch. Struck him out. Flory fans the first man he faces. It's a slider and it's uh, out of the strike zone. See that ball drop. Good movement on that slider from Flory. Travis going for a bad pitch. Bobby Higginson takes the fastball for a strike on the outside corner. Bobby's had a single to bounce the first and a fly to left. The leading Tiger hitter. In close on Higginson one and one. And to think Ernie he's going to end this year batting almost 100 points better than he did last year at 224. There's a telling figure left on base Milwaukee 11 Tigers 2. But that batting average and the improvement that Bobby Higginson has made that has made that is a terrific turnaround for him. D'Amico started for Milwaukee Sparks pitched the seventh inning Flores come on in the eighth. The Tigers have used three. Justin Thompson went five innings, Sega two and a third, and then Lima took over in the eighth inning. There's a drive to left. Miski is here to glove it for the out. Two down in the Tiger eighth inning. And here's a big man with a bat for the Tigers. Tony Clark, he's taken over the home run leadership of the team with two home runs. He has now hit 27. One with a man on today and one with the bases empty. Yeah, here's a young man I think you're going to be seeing around Tiger Stadium for a long time. If he just started the year here, he might have hit 35 home runs uh, in that range if he just started the year here. But a uh, great future ahead of him. Ball one from uh, Bryce Flory. He looks, there's a strike. That name sort of reminds you of Charleston, South Carolina. Bryce Flory. Kind of a southern name, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like Ernie Harwell. Oh, -ho. young man from Georgia. <laughs> well, watch out. 1-1 one, one now, Tony Clark. Two down, nobody on. The game tied 5-5. Five, five. 
It is a ball in the dirt, two and one. Cloudy skies now. He swings as a chopper to third, waiting for the hop is Unruh. Throw to first, the Tigers allowed one, two, three. Here comes the ninth inning. It is five to five. Now, for your home and shop, one amazing blade that cuts through practically anything. This is new multi-disc. It's safe, it won't break or shatter. It's amazingly flexible. It will never bind or kick back your work. Multi-disc cuts through this rock-hard ash baseball bat. It cuts through copper and iron pipes. Plastic pipes are cut off clean. There's no melting. Multi-disc is diamond and carbide throughout. It's one of the best grinding wheels on the market. It shapes tile, grinds away paint, rust, and debris in seconds. Call toll-free or send for multi-disc now and start saving hundreds of dollars on single-purpose blades and wheels. Best of all, multi-disc will work on any rotary tool in your home or shop. Put it on your household drill and it cuts like magic. Multi-disc cuts like a blade and grinds like a wheel. And you can use it on any rotary tool you own. Multi-disc sands for mica while it cuts so there's no chipped edges. Call or send now. Cut perfect angles and grind curves in ceramic tile. Cuts picture frame perfect moldings and trim. Hobbyists love it for detailing plastics, metal, and wood. Now, in this limited time offer, you get two multi-discs, a universal arbor to assure they'll fit all your rotary tools, and our unconditional money-back guarantee, all for only $12.98. Order now. Tiger Baseball on Passports is brought to you by the Learning Channel. Adventures for the mind, the Learning Channel. 5-5, tied up in the ninth inning. Here's Turner Ward without a hit today. Jose Lima, the third Tiger pitcher, delivers. Ball one on the Turner. Jose roughed up that last inning, and uh, mainly because of location on his pitches. Ball two, he came in, struck out the first man, uh, Gerald Williams, and then uh, yielded a single to Loretta and a double to Cirillo. And that one tied the game. Fouled away. Two balls and one strike. Nobody over there today. <laughs> Lima pitching to Ward is wide at three and one. Fly ball to left. Going back, Trammell coming in. Higginson uh, running between Marti and Trammell and makes a catch. One up, one away. Tim Unroe with a single about to short a walk and a foul to first base will be the batter. The clouds have rolled in now, obscuring the sunshine. Looks like a typical fall day, doesn't it? Yep. Strike one on Unro. Both pen busy. Fetters and Reyes. Fetters their closer. There's a drive foul down in that direction. Two strikes a count on Unro. John Cummings for the Tigers. Five five tied ninth inning at Tiger Stadium. He is out for excessive window shopping. He looked at one too many. Struck him out. Good movement on this fastball from Jose. Look at it on the outside part of the plate. I should say on that change up that was the circle change but terrific location and good movement on it. Well here's the tough man banks at the plate. 
And he goes for the first one and misses. He has walked, hit a home run, a double, and a single. Scored two runs and knocked in two. There's a fly ball down the line and right. This one will go foul. And the bounce up toward the seats. That one didn't have the good sound to it. Uh, well, we'll see how he does when he's behind in the count against Jose Lima. 0 and 2. He's had quite a day, and Ernie, he really looks good at the plate. Looked good from the right side and the left side. Got him, struck him out. The Tigers bat in the ninth inning with a chance to win it in the ninth. It's a 5 5 tie. Any basketball fan knows number 23 of the Chicago Bulls. Michael Jordan is a legend in his own time. His personal records read like those of an entire franchise. Three NBA championships, six-time scoring leader, playoff MVP, college player of the year. It goes on and on. Now, Air Jordan has personally authorized his first-ever signature mini basketball collectible. This limited-edition half-size basketball features a portrait of Michael, his number 23, and a facsimile signature of the sure-to-be Hall of Famer. This genuine piece of basketball history will only be sold during this special introductory offer for $29.95. It makes a great gift for basketball fans of every age. But supplies are limited, so order today while it's still available. To order your Michael Jordan Mini Basketball, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-253-8005. That's 1-800-253-8005. Or send check or money order for $29.95 plus $3.95 shipping to GSM Michael Jordan Basketball, P.O. Box 4943, Department A, Omaha, Nebraska. Welcome back. Red Ring, Red Wing Hockey is back on Pass Force. The Wings take on the Tampa Bay Lightning coming up tonight live at 7 o'clock with my old buddy Mickey Redmond and Passport's new play-by-play -play announcer, Mike Goldberg. The most Red Wing games are on Passport's, home of the Red Wings, home of the home teams. And another pitcher for the Brewers, it'll be Al Reyes. Al Reyes, who underwent that uh, horrible Tommy John surgery on his right elbow last year. He's 0-0 this year, a high ERA. He's only thrown four and two-thirds innings, a couple walks, and a couple strikeouts. But that surgery is absolutely horrible, and for his a pitcher to bounce back, after that type of surgery uh, is uh, really a blessing for him. He appeared in 27 games for the Brewers in 95. He is one and one with a 2.43 ERA with one save. Well, the Tigers scheduled three batters in Avis, Casanova, and uh, Cruz. Al Reyes on the mound. He was uh, formerly with the uh, Montreal Expos. And the Avis uh, takes a strike from the right hander. You know, in uh, talking to some of the Milwaukee people, they feel that Reyes throws a little bit harder now than before he, before he, when he had that surgery. Milwaukee picked him up in uh, December of 94 from the Expos in the uh, Rule 5 draft. He pitched all year for them uh, last year. Pitched uh, mostly at uh, Beloy this year. Little Tapper hits wide at third. Uh, glove by Unroll. The throw to first gets him one up and the one down. Not a very good swing at all. That's more of a two swing protect the plate type of swing. So not a good at bat for Melvin Nieves. I want to remind everybody the big salute to Ted Williams coming up October 17th at the Hyatt Regency in Dearborn. For more information, all you have to do is call 313-582-9124 and ask for Bill Reedy. Once again, 582-9124-313. October 17th, the great Ted Williams will be in town. Last seven Tigers have gone down in order. There's a bounding ball to Cirillo and make it eight. He tosses over to Banks. And there are two down in the ninth inning, so Cruz will be the batter. Fausto has flied to right, bounced to third, and single. Boy, I'll tell you what, Ernie, not uh, too good at bats for the Avis and Casanova, especially under these conditions. You want to wait for a pitch you can drive, and they were a little too anxious. 
Reyes uh, taking a breaking ball low ball one. Reyes has uh, set down the first two now the pitch to Cruz. Little uh, chopper hit to short Loretta gobbles it up throw to first and we go to the tenth inning tied five to five. Life could be a lot different. Come to Gaylord, Michigan, where life is simple. Eat, sleep, and play golf. Call us for your free Gaylord Golf Vacation Planner. 21 incredible golf courses, one beautiful location. Looking for a better job? Thinking about a career change? Still looking in the newspaper? Stop. There's a faster, easier way. The WDIV Job Connection lines are now open, offering hundreds of jobs with the area's top companies. This high-tech electronic classified service hosts jobs as soon as they become available and allows you to surf the listings 24 hours a day from any touchtone phone. Best of all, you'll hear job postings from actual company representatives. The WDIV Job Connection, the shortest distance between you and your next job. Lines are open. Make the connection now. Two for Milwaukee, five eight and zero oh for the Tigers, and why not play extra innings on the last day? John Cummings will take over for the Tigers. He last pitched the 25th of this month against Toronto. He went two and two thirds innings, gave up six hits, a rough outing for him, four earned runs. He walked one, and he struck out one. He's three and two on the year since coming over from Los Angeles. Four. 0.70 ERA, 30 and two thirds innings. He's walked 18 and he struck out 24. And those walks is an area where he hopes to improve on. And in fact, you could say that for most of the Tiger pitching staff. Too many walks this year, too many wild pitches, too many base hits. Jim, the Tigers have played 12 extra inning games this year, and they've won four. And all the four that they've won have been on the road. They are 0 and 4 here at Tiger Stadium in extra innings, and they are 4 and 4 on the road. Time to break that spell, is it not? Right. Milwaukee has uh, won 10 and lost six in extra innings. Here's Stanett, the uh, catcher, to lead it off in the tenth inning. The game tied five to five. He's had a single in four trips. Cummings delivers the ball outside. Well, you know, I'm glad, Ernie, we got all these goodies here today. We're going to be here a long time, so <laughs> all right. it'll keep us fortified. And the Californian delivers outside, and the count is 2-0 now on Kelly Stanett. Thompson, Sega, Lima, and Cummings. That's been Buddy Bell's pitching parade. Swinging for the boondocks on that one, 2-1. and one. Cummings with a fastball and a changeup. Three and one the count. He checked his swing. Well, let's see if you agree with the. Yeah, you have to agree with the umpire on that one. Walked him, and uh, that's something you don't want your relief pitcher to do. Walk that leadoff man. Boy, you sure don't. And most of his pitches against Tanet were high. The number nine batter Todd Dunn has had a single and a double. He's driven in a run and scored one. That's the dead at first base. Game tied 5-5. Nobody down. Tenth inning. Travis in close at third base looking for the bunt. Todd Dunn taking a long look at Chris Bando, the third base coach. Ready the body, and he took a hook that got the inside corner for a strike. That's Mr. Bando, one time of, Tiger. Brother of Sal Bando, who has done a fine job, Ernie, with this uh, Milwaukee ball club. The trades he made this year. I really think it's helped as this ball game and, and changed to uh, change their look. Stand at it first. 
The butt's on. He butts it toward third. They throw to second one. A relay to first not in time. Prime under Trammell for the force out. He butted the ball a little bit too hard. And it's a force at second. Well, this is a no-no. Travis uh, playing shallow. He bunts it hard right back to him. And with that strong arm, able to get the lead runner at second base. Leadoff man uh, Gerald Williams will be the batter for Milwaukee. Brewers and the Tigers are tied 5-5 five to five in the 10th. Tiger infield in double play depth. Williams has had a double and a single in the five turns. There's a base hit right set of field. Dunn racing for third. Here's the throw. It won't be in time. And they've got him at the corners. The Brewers are brewing up something here now. Well, they really are. And thank goodness that uh, Dunn made that bad bunt to Travis Fryman or the Tigers would really be in trouble right now. That's the third hit for Gerald Williams. Here it is. The slider on the outside part of the plate and he really peppers this ball over the head of Cruz into right center field and Nieves got it back in in a hurry. That's the 14th Milwaukee hit. They've had numerous scoring chances and they've cashed in on some of them. Yeah, they really have. They've stranded a lot of runners this afternoon. Infield in double play depth on Mark Loretta. He's had two singles on a walk today. And the curve is outside. Number two hitter in the batting order against the uh, Tiger pitcher Cummings. Strike. One and one on Loretta. Runner goes from first to second. Here's a throw through and not in time. Holding it third, though, will be the man that they're done. It'll be a steal. Well, I'll tell you what, credit Todd Cruz with a fine pickup because that ball very easily could have gone into center field and the runner from third could have walked home. Infield pulled in tight now with runners at second and third. One man down the game tied 5-5 in the 10th inning. And the count has gone to 3-1 and one on the Mark Loretta. Well, certainly a hitter's delight infield in. 3-1 and one count. This is where Cummings has got to get tough and cannot give in to the hitter. He's got to come up with a good pitch here. He walks him that loads the bases for Jeff Cirillo. Second walk off Cummins. He's issued two walks and had a single in between. And pitching coach Rick Adair out. Nobody warming up in the Tiger bullpen, but Rick Adair will come out to talk to his pitcher and catcher. Every one of the Milwaukee batters, with the exception of Turner Ward, has a hit. They've got five runs, 14 hits, and two errors. The Tigers have five runs, eight hits, and no errors. Here's Cirillo's record. He struck out, fouled to right field, bounced to second, struck out again, and then had a key hit in the three-run eighth inning, a double that knocked in a run. One of the toughest Milwaukee hitters, obviously uh, batting 326, but has been a good clutch hitter for this ball club. Tigers back up their infield into double play depth. There's a strike call.
Five five tie bases loaded one man down the Milwaukee 10th inning. Tigers looking for a strikeout a pop up or how about the old double play ball to tram to Cruz to Tony. One strike pitch coming to Jeff Cirillo. Fouls it away. He's got two strikes on him in a hurry. That's done at third. Gerald Williams at second. Loretta's at first. Now he's got two strikes on Cirillo. Little chopper foul. He just got a piece of that one. Well, against Cirillo, I've seen a little better uh, aggressiveness from uh, John Cummings, and that's the the way we have seen Cummings pitch before. Uh, come right after the hitters. Don't lolly jag uh, at all out there. Just challenge the hitters, and he's done this against Cirillo. But now he needs to put him away. Strike to the count on Cirillo. What's he going to throw him now Jim. Well, I think he's going to go with the hard stuff. He tried to come in that side inside the last time Ernie but you have to be careful in this situation for a wild pitch or a pass ball. Fast ball low. He doesn't throw many soft pitches up there so it's either going to be that hard slider or the fastball. Been a close game. The Milwaukee's tied it with three runs in the eighth inning. They're in the tenth now with a Large threat looming. Bases loaded, one man down. Five to five. Outside. Two two now on Cirillo. Well, well, here's the pitch he wants to get him on. He doesn't want to go any further. out. Freiman to Casanova. The bases remain loaded, but they cut down the front runner on the fourth. Well, just what the doctor ordered. He hits the ball in one hop right to Travis Freiman at third base. Now, he takes his time to make sure he makes a good throw to home to get the lead runner. That was the important out and unable to get the runner at first base, but make sure you get that all important run before it crosses home plate. Now the Western Michigan product Matt Miski will be the batter. The bases are loaded for Matt. Two men down. Game tied 5-5 in the tenth. He fouls it away. Well, the Brewers have left 11. They've got three men on now. And two out in the tenth. Sunshine's are back with us. But it's fading fast. Now the pitch on the way. It's a ball that almost hit him. And good play by Casanova. That saved that tie breaking run from crossing home plate. Watch him get down on one knee. The ball inside. Right there. Boy, and that's a good job smothering the ball and keeping it right in front of him. One one the count on Miski. Curve misses the far corner two and one. Now some of the folks who paid umpire disagree with the <laughs> official arbitrator, Mr. Larry Young. Two on the count. Three and one from Cummings. Okay. Now the advantage goes to the hitter Buddy Bell looking at the home plate umpire Larry Young. You know that Cummings has got to challenge the hitter. And I would guess it would be that fastball. 
He fouls it away. Sharp ground to pass third. And now we've got the full count again. Tigers five, Milwaukee five. Brewers are batting in the 10th inning here in the final game of the year. Matt Miski at the plate, John Cummings on the mound. Another foul, this one to the other side. Well, he just saved uh, ball four. That pitch up and away from him. Have to make up your mind in a hurry. It's about two fifths of a second that ball gets from the pitcher's slab to the home plate. Three two, the count on Miski. There's a drive to left. It'll be a base hit. Williams is scoring. Loretta is scoring. It's a single to knock in two, and Cirillo takes third. And the Brewers take the lead, seven to five in the tenth inning. Well, Cummings had to challenge uh, Miski, and he was uh, right up to the task. The ball down and in, and able to line it into left field to drive in the two go-ahead runs. So that was a good at bat for Matt Miski. Now watch the pitch. Right there in the inside part of the plate, that was to his liking. Line drive into left field, scores two easily with the runners on the run with a three and two count. Turner Ward, uh, the only Brewer batter without a hit. He's hit into double play, fly to right, foul to first, struck out and fly to left. Switch batter. Two out, runners at the corners, and he takes a curve from a coming. Seven to five, the Brewers on top in the tenth. There's a fly ball that should end the inning, and the Avis uh, comes over, makes the catch, and the Tigers bat in the tenth inning. Milwaukee leads it seven to five. Hi, I'm Peggy Fleming. Skating gave me the opportunity to see how sports can serve as a bridge to learning about the world and making new friends. Now as a parent, I want my children to have that same opportunity. Sport for Understanding offers high school athletes the chance to train and compete while living for a month with families around the world. Sports range from basketball to tennis, even skating. Call 1-800-424-3691 to find out more about Sport for Understanding. Welcome back, 7-15 and two for Milwaukee, Detroit 5-8 and 0. Couple of defensive changes for the Brewers, Fernando Vina will now take over at second base. Vina playing second base for Milwaukee. That is Jeff Cirillo. He goes from second base over to his normal position at third base. So Cirillo now playing third base. And the big guy, the closer himself, Mike Fetters, will take over for the Brewers. Three and three on the year. 31 saves, an outstanding ERA, 343. 60 in the third innings. He's walked 26 and he has struck out 53. He has been quite a pitcher for this ball club. A fastball, a breaking ball, outstanding split finger. As a matter of fact, in the game last Sunday in Milwaukee, Phil Gardner had it all set up for him to come in in the ninth inning and save the ball game, but the Tigers jumped on him and he took the loss in that ball game. But Mike Fetters has been an outstanding pitcher for the Brewers. Uh, the Tigers will start this uh, tenth inning with a pinch hitter. Ruben Sierra will come to bat. Ruben batting 248 with 12 home runs and 72 runs batted in. So Reyes goes an inning and uh, allows no runs and no hits. Seven to five, Milwaukee leading Detroit in the tenth. It's a strike called on uh, Sierra. He's batting for Barty. Ruben Sierra has been uh, kind of the forgotten man here with the Tigers recently. Two strikes on uh, Ruben. 
Well, the bullpen's been very effective for Milwaukee since the uh, fifth inning. They've had Sparks, Flory, and uh, Reyes, and that bullpen's allowed no runs in one hit. There's a high fly ball, short left. Miski puts it away. One up and the one down in the Tiger tenth inning. The last ten have gone down in succession. Pride without a hit. He's had a walk and a sacrifice. Batting uh, 297 as he comes to the plate here that might be his final time at bat in the season. And he takes the ball. We told you when Trammell came up in the seventh that it might be his final time, but it is not. He's on deck right now. Well, good to see him get one more chance in a Tiger uniform. 2 and 0 oh, the count now on the Curtis Pride. There's Tram waiting on deck. It's a strike delivered by Fetters. Three and one, the count on Curtis Pride. Milwaukee leads it seven to five. They got two on a bases loaded single by Miski in the tenth inning to take the lead. Strike. It's a full count on the Tiger leadoff man. Brown foul down to first base. Full count pitch. Fouls out of the way. Still alive. Oop, Larry Young uh, reached in and got another ball and knocked one out. He better get it right behind him. That can cause a lot of confusion. Boy, you're not kidding. Line drive on one hop and handcuffed to Pena, who went in for defensive purposes. It'll be a single, and the batter will be Alan Trammell. the third single to the sacrifice fly to center and the grounded out the third again man on first Tigers trail by two seven to five runner goes and uh, there's a foul out of play the play that Alan Trammell has been so adept at over the years a hit and run and he fouls it off Seven to five Milwaukee tenth inning a man on and the man out. One one pitch to Trammell. Shut up the middle the base hit by Allen. Pride holds it second and Tram gets a single here in the tenth inning.
Two men on. They want to give the ball to Allen. There is teammates up on the top of the dugout steps. Well, what a way to go out in style if, in fact, this is his last time at bat. That split finger fastball, a line drive right back through the middle in that classic Alan Trammell style. And now we'll get another ovation. Pan is running for Tram. I don't know, Ernie, the way he swung the bat today, uh, we should try to keep him around a little bit. Absolutely. Most valuable player in the 84 World Series. Shannon Penn now pinch running for Tram. One out, two men on. The Tigers trying to get back at him, and the Fryman takes a strike. Milwaukee got two in the tenth, but it's not over yet. The Brewers lead it. Seven to five. Blocked out in front by Stanett. One and one on Fryman. Fryman without a hit this afternoon. Foul to the catcher, popped the second into a double play. Popped the first and struck out. 1-1 one, one pitch for Fryman. Shot foul past third. Two two. There goes Pride. They pitches inside. Pride uh, steals third. Penn holds it first. Well, that's a case where the runner at first needs to be aware of what's going on. Pride stealing third and Penn on at first base with good speed held up. That would have been a potential tying run at second and third. Three two count on Travis. Chopper hit toward short. Loretta Devania one really the first a double play and the season is over. Milwaukee wins the final game here in ten innings. The final score the Brewers seven and the Tigers five. Detroit Tiger Baseball on Pass Sports, brought to you by Office Depot, taking care of business for companies of every size, everywhere, every day. By your Michigan Toyota dealers, where you can get a quantity vehicle for a low lease payment. And by your local Michigan and Northwest Ohio cable television company. What would you pay to look like a million dollars? Time Life presents The Firm, the exercise videos that are making firm believers out of people. I have shape and definition in my waist, and my butt looks like a 19-year-old after three kids. Other tapes are a waste of money. The only tapes that work on the market today are the firm tapes. Aerobics will burn fat, but the combination of weights and aerobics can burn three times more fat. Only The Firm combines weights with aerobics in every exercise. The Firm guarantees visible results in 10 sessions. They said, give us 10 tries and we'll make a difference. It really did. Immediately I started seeing results. Call now for Volume 1 of The Firm for just $9.99 and get the 20 questions about fitness video free. 
every few weeks. Receive a new Firm video, so call now. It's a whole new body. The Firm tapes give you a whole new body. To order The Firm and receive your free 20 questions about fitness video, call 1-800-253-8005 or send $9.99 plus $3.49 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. There are cosmic miracles, like a star being born, that we can only watch in awe. And then there are miracles right here on Earth that we can help make happen. A child drinking clean water in a village overseas where there never has been clean water. Desperately poor children going to school instead of just dreaming about going to school. Families growing up strong and healthy and freeing themselves from the grip of the world's cruelest poverty. Miracles made possible through an organization called Child Reach. Child Reach finds sponsors for needy children overseas and helps families and entire communities learn to help themselves. Call Child Reach at 1-800-328-2100. That's 1-800-328-2100. Why just watch a miracle when you can help make one happen? Well, the Tigers end the season in a losing way for Milwaukee, 7-15 and 2. For the Tigers, 5-10 and 0. Reyes gets the win. He's now 1 and 0. Cummings takes the loss. His record's 3 and 3. Fetters with his 32nd save of the year. Now the play of the game is brought to you by Ford. Think Ford first. Right now, get as low as 2.9% financing or cash back up to $2,000 on selected vehicles at your 31 Metro Detroit Ford dealers. And it is none other than Alan Trammell's last appearance at the plate for the Detroit Tigers. A line shot right back through the middle and that was the great Alan Trammell, his last at bat. Typical Trammell line drive right back through the middle. Just watch it and enjoy it. What a way to end a brilliant career for number three, Mr. Harwell. Yes, sir. Two hits in his final game an RBI on a sacrifice fly. And he goes out in the great style that he has displayed throughout his 20-year uh, career. So we await the uh, press conference. We're going to stick around for that. Alan is uh, going to announce his uh, retirement officially at the press conference. But I think today, Jim, the, uh, the game that the Tigers lost, 7-5, to five, uh, sort of a microcosm of their season. They had the lead. The pitchers couldn't right. hold it. And uh, that's the uh, story of the Tigers in the 1996. Well, when you look at this season, I looked at it in really different, three different areas. Like the first 50, 60 games, you know, they couldn't hit the cutoff man. They couldn't get any pitching. They couldn't get any hitting. They made a lot of errors. Then they started to play better, even though they lost ball games. They weren't losing ugly. Then I looked. That was the second stage. Now the third stage, they started to play the better teams who were fighting for not only to win the division, but to, to win the playoff spot. And there, once again, again, not, lo not, uh, not losing ugly, but not winning and really showing how far the Tigers have to go, really, to get a competitive ball club. So I looked at this season, really, as three different stages, Ernie. And there'll be a lot of wintertime activity, Randy Smith and company, oh. we know that. And it'll be interesting to see uh, what transpires the next spring uh, down at Lakeland, Florida. We will see a lot of new faces, I'm sure of that. Uh, the roster will probably change uh, greatly, the 40-man uh, roster. But again, you're going to have to build this team on pitching. Uh, they found out that some guys can play. You know, Tony Clark did a terrific job. Bobby Higginson, Mark Lewis proved that he's an everyday second baseman. Travis is strong at uh, short uh, and great at third base. Uh, Melvin Nieves, uh, terrific potential. Again, you have to re really has to center around that pitching and uh, what they're going to do in the starting rotation in the bullpen. We've seen it happen with other franchises like uh, the Cleveland and the Atlanta Braves and we just hope that the Tigers in their time can emulate those two very successful uh, franchises. Well Ernie I think it's going to be done but again the Tigers are asking for patience. Uh, you know the new stadium is three years away that has caused a lot of excitement. You know next year is going to be a difficult year also. I, I don't think you're going to see the Tigers go out and and try to pay some high priced ball players to come in here because we know it's going to be another difficult year. The following year they're hoping they can develop some players and then the following year maybe uh, put some pieces to the puzzle and time it right for the new uh, stadium which is uh, three years away. Uh, let's take a break and then we'll be right back to Tiger Stadium. I wanted a job where I could kick back. No responsibility at all. I can't believe I get paid for this. 
If there's a boat out there and he's stranded, that's us. We're out there. We're doing a job. This is the real thing. Yeah, anyone can be this crazy. Everybody has the same opportunities as anyone else. Oh, we're definitely, definitely helping to clean up the environment. Boys are earning their money today. Now that's a resume. Well, the 1996 baseball season is a history. And now we have uh, had a little uh, post game ceremony in which the Tiger fans have been awarded uh, jerseys from uh, the various players depending on uh, lucky draws. There's a uh, young fan who won the uh, Trammell jersey. And now the uh, members of the two teams Jim are going to come out and this is rather unusual that they will take uh, part in the press conference for Alan Trammell. Well and you know you really expected it for the Tigers but what a terrific gesture by the Milwaukee Brewers to show the tribute and the appreciation of uh, what Trammell has done in his 20 years in the major leagues. That is a terrific uh, move by the Milwaukee Brewers. There you see Buddy Bell uh, probably thanking Phil Gardner for this uh, bit of class by the Milwaukee Brewers. And the fans have been asked to remain and they can uh, enjoy the press conference on the public address system. I don't know how we'll uh, get questions uh, from the reporters on the PA system but I imagine they'll work out the logistics uh, one way or the other. Well I like how the Tigers did it. They announced throughout the ball game uh, the winners of the different uh, uniforms so they had them lined up right after the game and then all the Tiger players came out and uh, handed the jerseys uh, to the individual people that won the jersey. So that was really another touch of class by the Tiger organization this afternoon. There you see Curtis Pride and Joey Eichen. It's been a long year for these young Tigers, long year for all the Tiger fans, but uh, things will get better. Notice Mr. Illich coming out with John McHale. And you can see the uh, gathering of the reporters. There's John McHale working his way through the crowd with uh, Mike Illich. There's a Trammell himself getting ready and I'm sure he's thought about this a great deal. He's a very thoughtful and sincere young man. And I think he was moved Jim by the reception that he got. Before. Oh absolutely. Let's hear Alan now. Barely. I think that's one of the reasons why we need a new ballpark. It's hard to hear. I've been playing here for 20 years and I've had a hard time listening to the sound system. So <laughs> bear with me. Uh, first of all, I don't know where to start. I'm going to try to make it as short as possible. Hopefully I'll, I'll handle this okay. I know if you're a sports fan like me, you want to get home and watch some football. So that's the first thing I'm going to be doing tonight. You're probably wondering why I've gathered all you here, and it's not to tell you that I've signed a five-year extension. The time has come. No, that's not going to happen. It's the time has come for me to move on. Uh, today was my last day, and as much as it hurts to say that, it's it's somewhat of a relief. Thank you. Every one of us here had a dream and I feel very, very fortunate that I've been able to do it probably a little bit longer than most. And the one thing that I'm most proud of is that I did it with one ball club my whole career and uh, that means a lot. The 
It's been a full circle for me when I was drafted 20 years ago. I was a skinny little shortstop, was told that if you hit 250 and played good defense, you'd be around a long time. And uh, as you know, the trend has changed in baseball. Middle infielders now are, are doing a lot of damage, and a lot of people have included me in that group where Robin Yount, David Concepcion, I think was the first step in that direction, and I followed suit Cal Ripken, and now you got tons of guys that not only are hitting 30 home runs, but hitting 350 to boot. So if I had anything to do with that, I just wanted to be myself. I've always wanted to be a well-rounded player, and I think when you add all the years up, you find out that I did a pretty good job, but I don't think I was great in any one area, but, but good in a lot of areas. And that, that was my goal when I came to the major leagues, to be a good major league player. I hope that the players around me will look at the way I went about my business, which I felt was the correct way to do it, be a professional, every day is a new day, and do your best. And if you have good work ethics and good preparation, you're going to have a lot more good days than bad. And I, I've been doing that for a long time. And if I was to play next year, I'd do the same thing. And that's the only way I know. And I hope that the young guys here can take that and run with it, because that's the only way you're going to be successful and stay a long time in the major leagues. I don't know where to go from here except for thank, first of all, I, I need to thank the, the Tiger organization who gave me the opportunity. Um, I know that when I first signed that there was a lot of debate on where I should go as far as what, what round, and that's, that's all history. But uh, they were the ones that gave me the opportunity. Growing up on the West Coast, uh, I remember the first day in Bristol, Virginia, which was rookie ball. It was quite a, quite a culture shock going from California, but uh, I adjusted well. And I just feel very, very lucky. I know that we've heard it this year and, and other things, but I definitely today feel as lucky as any man in this country. And I feel very fortunate. And, uh, you know, let me end with this, that I'm retiring as an active player today. But I will let you know that I'm not retiring from the Detroit Tigers, that you're going to see me around. We have worked out an agreement that I'm going to be around, and uh, exactly what capacity, I'm not sure, but uh, you can bet on it. I'm going to go in there. It's a new challenge for me. I'm ready for a new challenge, and I'd like to see this ball club get back to where it was once before. It'll take some time, but we've got the people to do it. And with Buddy and his staff, I've had a really a very enjoyable year. As, as much as, as many losses as we have, that's hard to, hard to imagine because as any player has, we have pride, and nobody likes to be embarrassed. And I know that this year has been a rough year for us, but I do know that there are better days ahead and the strong will survive. And as, as tough a season as it was, we'll find out about certain players here, and the guys that can make it will survive. And you'll, those are the guys you'll see next year and the year after that. So thank you very much for coming out. Let's go watch some football. And thank you very much for your support over the 20 years here. Thank you. It's a fitting uh, end to the 1996 Tiger season, a moving goodbye by Alan Trammell, receiving the plaudits not only of his teammates, but of his opponents and all the folks here who've uh, enjoyed his uh, great play over the years. Let's take a break and then we'll be right back. Tim Conway's back, and he's hauling in a whopper. It's Dork Goes Fishing, this year's funniest comedy home video. Let Tim Conway as that master sportsman dork show you everything you've always wanted to know about fishing. Go back in time to man's first fishing method. Let Dork show you what to wear, how to clean your day's catch, how to get in shape, the joys of fishing with your spouse, plus important boating and safety tips. 
Dwarf Ghost Fishing is guaranteed to be the funniest fishing video you've ever seen, and it's not available in stores. So what are you waiting for? Call and order Dwarf Ghost Fishing today. Call now and you'll get Dwarf Ghost Fishing plus this official Dwarf Floating Keychain absolutely free. For rush delivery, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-253-8005. The funniest, the most outrageous Tim Conway at his very best, Dwarf Ghost Fishing. That's 1-800-253-8005 or send 1995 plus $4 to the address shown on your screen. Well, Alan Trammo went out with class, 20 years of class here for the Tigers. On behalf of Ernie Harwell and Jim Price, I want to thank everybody with the Tiger organization, the PR department, the marketing department, all of our folks at PASS, everybody behind the scenes that did such a wonderful job, not only here at the ballpark, but of course at our studios at WDIV. I want to thank you from the bottom of our heart, all professionals, and it was our pleasure to work with you once again this year. And we'll look forward to seeing everybody next year right back here at Tiger Stadium. Ernie Harwell with Jim Price. And Ernie, take it over, buddy. Thank you, Jim. And that closes out the 96 baseball season for the Tigers. Hope you've enjoyed watching the games. We've enjoyed bringing them to you. And tonight, be sure to join Mike Goldberg and Mickey Redman at the Joe Louis Arena for exhibition Red Wing Hockey. Game time, 7 o'clock. The Red Wings host the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now for my partner, Jim Price. This is Ernie Harwell saying so long from downtown Detroit. And we'll see you in the spring of 97. Once again, the final score of the game today in 10 innings, Milwaukee 7 and the Tigers 5. Michigan Sports.